Is there a... Uh... Join us this February. The world comes to America for the 1980 Winter Olympics. They have been waiting in Cleveland, Ohio for this night for a long time. Excitement prevails in this usually troubled city. There is a capacity throng on hand in Municipal Stadium. Why? Monday night football, the battle of the unbeaten Dallas against Cleveland. And for the Dallas Cowboys, who make a habit of winning late, there is this kind of typical play. The flea flicker. And Roger the Dodger Starback deep to Tony Hill touchdown. But the Cleveland Browns have the underrated quarterback, Brian Seif, who pulls out miracle victories. And he likes to throw to this man, the much-traveled Reggie Rucker, who has found a home and excellence here in Cleveland. On the ground, the Cowboys' principal weapon is the remarkable product of ages and the Pittsburgh Panthers. Number 33, look at him, a loose tackler, cuts back right across the field. But... Of course, Cleveland has a similar weapon. The little water bug from Oklahoma, Greg Pruitt. Now he's there, now he isn't. So on Monday Night Football, what hopes to be an exciting game. It's the Cleveland Browns against the Dallas Cowboys, two of five unbeaten teams in the league. 20 seconds here, stand by all cameras. Stand by in video tape. Stand by slow-mo. Stand by open your mics on the field. Stand by in graphics, ready with your open super. Stand by the announcers in the booth, please. And roll okay. Three, two, one, take take. of electricity as two of the NFL's unbeaten go against each other tonight an anticipated crowd of 80,000 plus ABC's NFL Monday Night Football the Dallas Cowboys against the Cleveland Browns and this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Buick for Riviera and the mid-size Century and Regal to 1980s smaller Buicks like Starlark you'll find very fine cars and very good thinking and by Lanier Business Products creators of problem electronic typewriter a typewriter that does more than just type. There are the standings in the NFC East, and Dallas is up there alone and unbeaten a half game ahead of the Eagles. But in what may be the strongest division in the NFL, the AFC Central, Cleveland, though unbeaten, is behind the mighty Steelers, who have won one game more than they. The noise here, as you can hear, is utterly deafening. I haven't seen this kind of excitement in this ballpark since 1948, when for the first time in 28 years, the Cleveland Indians became the world champions of baseball. The people in Cleveland believe in this Brown team, which has extricated three consecutive miracle victories in the late going. And the history of the Dallas Cowboys this year is in much the same vein. Part of the great excitement in Cleveland has been through the acquisition of a superb defensive end who wears number 77, the name Lyle Alzado, the man who left football, fought an exhibition against Muhammad Ali earlier, but is back now with the Browns. Dan DeRue spoke to him earlier. All right, a man of many talents. We're going to have a football game tonight. Things get rough. Might want him on my side. You had a boxing career this past off season, uh, talking to Lyle Alzada, the newest member of the Cleveland Browns. Were you serious about your boxing career? Absolutely. had an opportunity to fight Leon Spinks, and uh, if I'd have done well, there would have been some big things in my future in boxing. So I had to look at it for the, fin for the financial security part of it. I got the impression, Lyle, that when you left in Denver that you didn't want to play in Denver. And if you couldn't play football anywhere else, that you would have concentrated more on your boxing. Was that correct? Absolutely. I would have gone to boxing. 
like as I mentioned before, some great offers, and uh, I had I had to look into it. You know, my family counts on me, and the security factor was too great for me to pass up. What happened in Denver? Well, uh, I had a contract dispute with uh, with somebody there, and uh, I wasn't told the truth, so um, I had to get out. I felt it was time for me to leave Denver, and uh, I have no hard feelings with Coach Miller or any of the assistant coaches, all the players there, my teammates. I love them all, and I'm glad to see they're doing very well. Got a little Bronco mania in the air tonight here in Cleveland, so hope we have a good ball game, and thank you, Lyle. Thank you. Lyle Alzado, and meanwhile, the Dallas Cowboys are concerned about their own defensive left-hand spot. That was where Ed Tutal Jones used to operate. He went into boxing. He's still in boxing. Larry Cole will open there tonight. Dave Stalls will replace the retired Jethro Pew on the left side, but they've given up a lot of yardage on the ground. They gave up over 200 yards to the Cardinals. They did the same to the Chicago Bears only a week ago. There is concern on the part of the Dallas Cowboys. And nevertheless, they're 3-0, and and that's where they like to be defeated. Two fine football teams coming your way tonight. It should be a great game, so stick around with us. Radio Shack has slashed the price on one of our top-of-the-line stereo systems. Right now, save $310 on this impressive realistic hi-fi. You get this quality AM-FM stereo receiver, a pair of realistic tower speakers, and this precision belt drive turntable, all for only $579. A great entertainment bargain and a beautiful addition to your home. The sale price realistic stereo system, just $579, only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. We're brought together here by two dudes we all love. Good food. And right here from Miller. Yeah. I want to take an opportunity myself. Give me the carrot. The tail. I tell you, I'm going to respect. Gaston, you're being senior. You see it with your senior. What is it? Meat loaf sandwich and a light. We all know and appreciate, light has one third less calories than a regular beer, and it's less filling. But the best thing is, it tastes great. Less filling. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Hey, Deacon, pass the roll. Pass the roll. Hey, Charlie, that's my beer. No, this is by your brother. This is my brother. That's my beer. What's wrong with you guys? Hey, Bubba, you want the peas? Ooh. Hey, you gonna eat all that? Just showing off. Gentlemen, in closing, I'd like to think I speak for all of us, but I say if it wasn't for light, I wouldn't be where I am today. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. There's the excitement in the air tonight here in Cleveland. And quickly, since we have a moment for the kickoff, our apologies to Molly Gravel, the wife of Gordon Gravel. Last week, the Giants against Washington, we were given misinformation. Gordon Gravel was given a number activated that day that he did not wear. And that number did not have a very good night. So for Molly and Gordon, our apologies. Cleveland has won the toss. And you're looking at the Dallas huddle now. Here's Cleveland set to kick off. And Don mentioned earlier, he said, boy, there are some tight feelings out there tonight. The Cleveland Browns playing the Dallas Cowboys. They've had some great games over the years. And now both of them are coming in tonight undefeated. Undefeated Cleveland with a total of nine points against their three opponents. For the Cowboys have beaten three opponents by a total of 13. Okay. Raphael Septian will kick off a dangerous return man, number 89. Keith Wright is deep, along with Randy Ritz, number 24. Wright, 89. We're underway. Septian hits the low, and it'll be Keith Wright at his goal line. Ah, yeah. And Keith Wright gets it out in good field position for the Cleveland Browns. He leads the... AFC and punt returns, you see, can also return the kickoff. There is the offensive unit. The danger is Greg Pruitt. He is a Lucy, Lucy, slippery, much like the running of Tony Dorsett for the Dallas Cowboys. There's an offensive line that does a good job. Not great names in there, but they do a good job in protecting their quarterback, Brian Seitz. Brian Seitz passing over a little, little over 52% on the year, six touchdowns. Not a long arm, but he doesn't care much about that. He doesn't want to hear about it. He says, I can throw it far enough. Greg Pruitt, 34, 43 is Mike Pruitt. Sight on first and 10. Goes out intended for Greg Pruitt, incomplete. Defensively, let's meet the Cowboys. We told you about the troubles over the left side with the retirement of Ed Tutal Jones and Jethro Pugh. Dave Falls is a tackle, number 65, Larry Cole at 63. Bruce Thornton will see a lot of action, number 77, as we look at the linebackers. The cornerbacks, Benny Barnes and Aaron Kyle, who had early preseason troubles with ankles and 
Assorted leg problems are healthy for the Cowboys. Second down and ten. Reggie Rucker is flipped to the right. Fine receiver for Brian Seitz. Dave Logan, a fourth-year man from Colorado, split out to the left. He wears number 85. Rucker in motion, wearing number 33. And there is a bobble ball from the center. Brian Seitz comes up with it and moves out close to the line of scrimmage is Randy White, a very quick and nimble defensive right tackle moves over there to pounce on Seitz. It'll be third down and nine. I think... I think Mr. Seitz might realize there's a full house here tonight. What do you think? <laughs> if he doesn't, he's <laughs> not alive. It really has been a, an exciting day here because the whole town has really turned out in Super Bowl fashion. <laughs> and old Brian says, I'm going to a, show these folks I can win the big game. Cowboys set in their anticipated pass defense. That means Bruce Thornton, 77, comes in there. Out comes Larry Cole. Cleo Miller, number 30, comes in the backfield for Cleveland on third down and nine. Sight back and looking. Gets the time. Fires over the middle. This is Drake Crook. All right. Drake Crook, a nifty receiver coming out of that backfield, as well as a gifted runner as a first down for Cleveland. 36 yard line of Bella. And of course, you'll be, as we look at it again from the end zone, you'll be seeing this all night. A familiar tactic of Sight working so well with the little water bug, John. Well, there was, again, Dallas's prevent defense, and Pruitt really is a good receiver. Came back on the outside. He had Aaron Mitchell. And now the newcomer back there trying to trail him, and old Greg made a big game. One-on-one. -on -one. Aaron Mitchell, a rookie from Las Vegas, Nevada out there. A great Pruitt has the first down for Cleveland. 36-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. This is Mike Pruitt, the fullback. It's inside the 35 for a game of a long yard. It'll be second down tonight. Mike Pruitt, of course, went to Purdue. He's been around four years. Greg Pruitt went to Oklahoma. He's been around seven. They reversed their numbers. Greg Pruitt, 34. Mike Pruitt is 43. The reason this should be a good, exciting game is both teams have offense. We were lacking in that a week ago. It should not be the case tonight. The Browns can move the ball against anybody. Ozzie Newsom, they're tied in. This Bottom of your screen to the right, and here comes Reggie Rucker in motion. Two dangerous receivers. Fight up on top. Goes to Rucker. Rucker has the ball. Short of the first down. Or he may have it. He's close to it at the 26-yard line. Denny Barnes covering. Yes. All right, as you look at Rucker isolated, the corner rises. Number 33. Take the play, Don, then I'll continue. Well, you start it. You go ahead. I'm going to pick it up later. Well, Reggie Rucker was a reject. He had started with the Cowboys. He had been with the Giants. He had been with the Patriots. What does a coach mean to a ball club? Well, Sam Rattigliano, 16, 17 years an assistant coach, now a head coach, his dream being fulfilled. Took Rucker, and he made a full-fledged professional out of him. Gave him the confidence he needed. And so Rucker is now a key target in the Cleveland offense. Indeed he did. He had him up in New England. He recognized the talent that is now Reggie Rucker's. You saw the first down indication by our referee, Cal Laporte. Getting the call is Greg Pruitt. And he tries to find the opening, finds a little gap in there, gets a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight, getting close to the 23-yard line. Three straight 1,000-yard seasons in 75, 76, and 77 did Greg Pruitt. Last year, a lot of trouble with a bruise on his leg. Came back, then had further problems. And still had a big year with 960 yards rushing. Second down and eight. The ball close to the 23. Just underway from Cleveland. Sykes throws it away as Drucker collides with Benny Barnes downfield. No flag. It'll be third down and eight. Rucker immediately claimed interference, but in point of fact, hit. Done. Why don't you run back the collision? Run back the collision. I think basically what it was is a little slip back in there. You'll see that it just slipped in and fell to him, so it was an obvious accident on both guys' parts, so no interference it was called. But claim it anyway. Remember the Swan Bonds altercation? Key play in the last Super Bowl? Third down and eight. Calvin Hill comes in on the passing situation for Cleveland, a former Dallas Cowboy, a 1,000-yard rusher there, a very heady player and a good receiver. He wears 35. Going for Logan. He's open. He's got a touchdown. Dave right. Logan, a gifted receiver, beat Aaron Kyle in the corner, and right on target was 
Brian Frank. Now this is Monday Night Football. Dave Logan, the man who with 14 seconds and no timeouts remaining as we look at it again from the end zone. Caught one from sight and set up the tying field goal against the Jets. Then the Browns won an overtime. This is a great all-around athlete time. It really is. Cleveland picking up a safety blitz on the part of the Dallas Cowboys. Gabe sights the time. Logan with a great move on Aaron Kyle. Cleveland's on the scoreboard. Cockrock. I don't believe that. So Seif and Dave Logan have put the Cleveland Browns on the scoreboard and they can be also costly misconversion. Buick proudly announces some very fine cars and some very good thinking. This is the 1980 Century Limited sedan. My sister thinks it's very sophisticated. My dad thinks it's economical. My mother thinks it's roomy. I think I'm lucky to have it tonight. This is the limited edition Regal Somerset. I think it's elegant proof that a truly sensible car doesn't have to be boring. 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 This is the Buick Riviera, an automobile so incredible that people who could seriously think about buying almost any car in the world are driving Rivieras. This is the Buick Skyline. It has a surprising amount of room and comfort and really good economy and front I think it just might be the perfect car for me. Oh, you? Do you think that owning a 1980 Buick might be a good idea? Good thinking. The most important fight this year, undefeated Larry Holmes battles the WBC number one ranked contender, Ernie Shaver. Friday night on ABC. A great athlete from the University of Colorado. He could have played pro basketball, he could have played baseball, he was drafted by Kansas City, and he just puts Cleveland on the scoreboard. Dave Logan. Cockcroft. Hurry this conversion attempt, it appeared. So Cleveland only got six. So Cockcroft will kick off. Deep is Ron Springs. Number 20, number 81 is Steve Wilson, a rookie from Howard. And a speedy rooker he is. But this will be Ron Springs from his 10-yard line. And Cleveland hustling down, inspired by that quick early lead. And Dallas will have the ball at the 20-yard line. Curtis Weathers. Mississippi down there defensively as we look at Tom Landry in the fourth game of his 20th season. What a remarkable coaching performance he has come through. The only coach the Cowboys have ever had. He can become the fourth winning as coach as you look at the graphic on the Cleveland scoring drive in history this year. Tom Landry behind Hallis, Lambeau, and Shula. Paul Brown is presently fourth. For the Cowboys, 35, Scott Laidlaw. A surprise is in there for Robert Newhouse with one set back. Tony Dorsett, the other, number 33. And this is Laidlaw, who had a fairly good day against the Bears last week. The wide receivers, Drew Pearson, along with Tony Hill, and dangerous they are. A lot of speed. Tony Hill having a great year, and one of these days, Drew Pearson, because of Tony Hill, is going to come through with a big day. Billy Joe Dupree, the tight end, dangerous receiver. You saw the offensive line, the messenger will be set in with the left guard Herb Scott and Dallas, or the tight end Duck Cosby and Billy Joe Dupree. There was a gain of six by Laidlaw. It's second down and four. Ball at the 22 yard line. Sawback. Dorsett. And down goes Dorsett. A hustling Cleveland defense led by Mickey Sims and Clarence Scott up there from the tight safety position. And there is that front four. Not big names but they are very steady players. The safety man, Oliver Davis, in on that stop. Along with Clarence Scott. Clarence Scott has played the corner for Cleveland up until this year. Good tackler, his speed might be a little suspect. There was a loss to the 24-yard line. It's third down and seven. Preston Pearson comes in, number 26. You know about him if you follow the Cowboys. A dangerous receiver. Out of a shotgun. Saw that with a lot of time. And in and out of the hands of Ron Spring. It'll be fourth down. The crowd loved it. Well covered. There was Ricky Jones coming over there. Nickel defense. Actually, it was a four-man line with the guys back on the back side. I think it's really important that uh, to this game that Cleveland was able to stop Dallas on their first drive. They got the opening kickoff, took it down. I think a lot of cities around the country, stadiums affect home teams 
the different degrees. This one here in Cleveland, I think, gives them the home team a bigger boost or as big as any, any stadium I've ever been in. Keith Wright, number one in the AFC, returning punt. Danny White will punt. Backup quarterback for Dallas. He has not taken a snap since he broke his thumb in preseason, but he can pass. And he ripples a beauty win. Wright takes it at the 26-yard line. And Wright back to the 38-yard line where he's passed on by the Cowboys. So Faison once again has good field position following a 50-yard Danny White punt and a nice return by Wright. Sorry. No experience, no job. Where do I get the experience? Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. We don't ask for experience. We give it. You won't read it in a book. You live it. Pick up service. Pick a challenge. Set yourself apart. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. What a great place. It's a great place to start. Usually people don't change insurance companies to save money. They change because of service. That's why State Farm agents work so hard to be good neighbors. When people have a question, I try to get the answer right away. It's the same with the claim. I make sure it starts out right, so it'll be handled right. Fast and fair. We don't lose many policyholders. For your life, your health, your home and your car. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A profile of Ed McMahon and a school of killers, Thursday on 2020. Well, I don't know about you, Howard. The toughest part for Dandy and myself was getting out of here in one piece. <laughs> They're somewhat rabid here, aren't they? Oof. Noise really affects you here, Dandy, when you quarterback. Yeah, it really does. I think for a lot of reasons. The way the stadium is built, a lot of echo down there. So it's kind of hard. You get a good home crowd behind you, and it's got to help. Cleveland with a 6 to nothing lead. They scored in their first possession. They have a first and 10, just inside the 39-yard line. Sight. They're going to have an aerial show tonight. You can see it brewing. How's he, Newsom? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. Newsom, high steps up, and he's out of bounds at close to the 46-yard line. Short of the first down by about three. It'll be second and seven. It was Cliff Harris moving over there, and Newsom, a great receiver, and also Don, a heads-up receiver. I think one of the difficult things that Dallas is having to do this year is to establish a pass rush. You see Larry well tied up there at the inside. Ozzie Newsom was a safety valve, not really intended in that pattern. Stipe rolled out, picked him up. That one is just to keep you from not losing anything and helps your percentage, all those sort of wonderful things. It's just there. He's going to block for a little while and then slide out in the open. Hard to cover that pattern because he's tied up too long on the line. Side, four of six for 67 yards, looking over a second down. A long three, the ball at the 46-yard line. The toss goes to Mike Pruitt, the fullback, and he is upended there by Cliff Harris, short of the first down by about a yard. It'll be third and one. Really, Bob Riddick that came over, Frank gave him that first big shot. He got out of the big middle linebacker. Cliff was a real headhunter, but the guy with Riddick's size and speed put the stop on him first. Cliff came in, knocked it away, and held him up short. Thank you. Thing to observe, there's Brunick about whom Dunn was just talking about. Sipe is the way he diversifies his receivers. Frank told you he's four out of six. Four different receivers. Brewer, Rucker, Logan, and then that last one, of course, Newsom. Short yardage set by the Cleveland Browns. The motion man is Adams. Sipe on third and one. Looking for Greg Pruitt, and he was picked up by the Cowboys. He's going deep to Newsom. Oh, oh, oh. Cliff Harris touchdown, and Brian Spike did that last week against Baltimore. Hit Logan for a key touchdown. He's done it again. Look at that, Newsom. He was a wide receiver. Hey, they didn't think he could block well enough to play tight end. He is still not an exceptional block. Then there were those who said he didn't have the speed of 4840. He's the fastest 40, 4840 you'll ever see. And that underrated quarterback, Sight, moves the football team. Done. Fairly simple play, but you see Harvey Martin is the only guy that really breaks through. Dallas has not had a good pass rush tonight, nor in the earlier three ball games. Ball was well thrown. Ozzie Newsom does have good speed. He has about four inches height on Cliff Harris, and that ball was right in there, wasn't it? It sure was. Yes, it was. This time, Cockroft drills it to the uprights, and Cleveland, with 9.32 remaining in the first quarter, has a 13 right. lead. He's pretty well blocked up on the line, but Guy Brown is a good tough linebacker. 
And if we had one of those hang time clocks on it, you see you had about five or six seconds to throw it off. Busted plays, oftentimes too short. Flip is right there. Ball went right between his hands, and Ozzy's right on top. Right and on. You know what they say about Sipe. He can't throw deep. Well, he just hung that one up there for about 48, 50 yards. Ozzy Newsom, he likes it, and we'll be right back. After all these years, I still like working out. But what I really like is the beer that's waiting for me when it's over. And if you work out the way we do, there better be a lot of beer waiting. That's why we drink light beer from Miller. Light has one-third less calories than regular beer, and it's less filling, and it tastes great. I'm a guy who works out a lot. could really use one right now. There you go, bro. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. I love football, and I love relaxing. Because for me, relaxing always includes skull. The smokeless tobacco. Just a pinch between my cheek and gum gives me great tobacco taste without lighting up. Got the sea, the breeze, got my skull. Nothing's going to make me move. Think I'll play some touch. Skull, brother. Try going smokeless. A pinch is all it takes. Tigliano in his second season as head coach of the Cleveland Browns kind of keeps this game in perspective quite a man he really is a nice guy John Crockroft will kick off Ron Springs is deep for Dallas number 20 as is Steve Wilson number 81 doesn't kick it deep hangs it high this will be Springs but Springs pounded out at the 28 yard line Curtis Weathers again and John Smith down there defensively for Cleveland and Dallas has had one possession. They're down 13 to nothing. The Cleveland Browns in that one possession stopped the Cowboys, the number one offensive team in the NFL after three games, forced them to putt. They came right back and hung up another touchdown. <laughs> That's the way they feel about them in this town. It's alive tonight. Over 80,000. President Gerald Ford sitting right next to us in our booth watching the game. Laidlaw stays in there, number 35. Billy Joe Dupree, the tight end, on an end around, and down goes Billy Joe Dupree, and it was Jerry Shirk, a rejuvenated Jerry Shirk, who from knee surgery a year ago was about 75% of what he had been when he was the MVP in the league in 75, and this year he's even better. Rejuvenated is the word. Jerry Shirk, a rookie in the very first Monday night football game ever. Dandy and I did that one out of Oklahoma State. And the Jets picked on him all night. Randy Rasmussen chewed him up, but he came on to become all league, and he's one of the best there is at what he does. Second down, about 11. Loss of a little more than a yard. That's Doug Cosby, the rookie from Santa Clara in motion. 84, Roger back looking, and he firing Cosby out of the 34-yard line. Short of a first down by about five. It'll be third and five. Clarence Scott defensively for Cleveland. We told you about Cosby in the Hall of Fame game. Remember, Gil Brandt had counted him highly to us, the young man from Santa Clara. Great wow. hand. Kyle Alzado is the shaken up Cleveland Brown. He's up now. Kyle Alzado working mostly against Pat Donovan tonight. That's Donovan and Alzado getting it on right there. Oh, there you go, right there. It fell into him. That's where they get it. That was uh, Hubert Scott that rolled in on Alzado's leg as he was being blocked by Donovan. And that's really how you can get hurt. That gets a little knee. You got all your weight on your legs and he falls at it. Walks off. That's a good sign. Jack Gregory acquired by the, reacquired by the Browns for the start of the season after retiring from the Giants. He's in the lineup replacing Alzado. Gregory wears number 81. Third down five out of the shotgun. Sawback fires kickoff oh, by oh, Paul Garden. Oh. And he's going to hang up another one. There oh. goes Tom Darden out of Michigan. He read that beautifully. Yeah. He had the league last year in interceptions with 10, set a Browns record. And he picked off another one, moved into the end zone, and Cleveland has shocked the Cowboys. One of the most intelligent men in the National Football League, Tom as Frank said, led the league last year in interceptions with 10. A great reader. Spent last evening with him, in fact. Did his local radio show, which he has here with him, and predicted that he would pick one off and maybe for a TD, and he just did. 
What a night so far for Cleveland. <laughs> I'm almost speechless. <laughs> Don Cockroft. Busy going for Cockroft here in the opening minutes of the first quarter. The 75-55 remaining in the first quarter. Cleveland Browns have extended their lead to 20 to nothing over the Cowboys. Look at it again. He read it all the way, Don. Frank, I don't know if they're doing anything differently or not on defense. You'll see that. <laughs> Roger threw the ball a little quick trying to hit Pearson in there. And Darden, you're right, was just right in the right position. So they read something. They've been looking at a lot of films. They know what's going on. How about that one for the sports fans? <laughs> There's Tom here out of Michigan. This will be no one of those hard nights for me. The interesting thing is he wears specs, you know. Eyes aren't that good, except he takes them off during the game, and the eyes are good because there are no contact lenses in there. There's Alzado. They're working him over. Well, he's a fighter, John. Uh, yeah, yeah. It looks like they might have tried to protect against a little hyperextended knee there. Well, they're wrapping that thing. I'll remind you again, Dallas came in to this game tonight, leading the NFL in offense. They have not had much offense thus far. I'm glad you reminded me of that, Frank, because I'd almost forgotten it myself, and I was sitting right here watching. Six plays they've had. Partisan crowd, of course, here at a jam-packed Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Don Cockroft will kick off. Steve Wilson and Ron Springs are back there once again. They've been making that their home here in the first quarter. Ron Springs. Out of Ohio has a little opening, and this time Dallas will have better field position up to their 38-yard line. As I mentioned before, there is one of the great centers at the University of Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> president Darrell R. Ford. He's with Art Motel, the president of the Cleveland Indians, the principal owner. President Ford has to be feeling pretty good about a former Wolverine with that interception in the judgment quite a scare. Don and I had a few runs out of there with him the past couple of years. <laughs> Clear the hill. Oh, about half the Secret Service, I think. On first and ten, this is Dorsett for the Cowboys. Dorsett flips one tackle, but down he goes. He got away from Clay Matthews and was able to eke out a couple of yards. Yep. Be second down and eight. You see Cleveland gang tackle on that one. 22, Clarence Scott. 27, Dom Darden. They're all over the place. And young Clay Mass, 57, out of USC, Frank Alma Mater, a fine young linebacker. They got people here, and they're putting it together. While Alzado, we are informed, will be back at the moment. It's number 81, Jack Gregory, bottom of your screen, in there defensively for Alzado. But he alternates during the course of a regular game in any event. On second and eight, Starback, Tony Hill. Complete, short of the first down at the 25 yard line. And Hill got pounded as he went out of bounds, hit there by Oliver Davis. It'll be third down and three for Dallas. And they'd like to get their initial first down of the first quarter. There's been a tendency by some, Danny, to underrate the Cleveland secondary. But you just saw Oliver Davis with a big hit, the prior play, Scott and Darden, Darden with the intercept. Oliver Davis made the key intercept off Matt Robinson in the Jets game that produced the Cockroft game-winning field goal. So I don't see that weakness, Frank. It's amazing how good they get when they get rush. Third and three. Cowboys at their 45-yard line. Going to Laidlaw. Laidlaw has it at midfield, and he has a Dallas first down. Their initial first down of the ball game. It'll be at the 48-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Ron Bolton in there defensively for Cleveland as... We got another sky-high view of a jam-packed stadium. Hard on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Got us a good first down in there. Well, they got that straight. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you, that was a good hold by Laidlaw because he was hit by Bolton. Bolton wants the Patriot, another one who's come on here for Cleveland. Ball just short of the 48-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Drew Pearson, 88, in motion. Roger floods back to the left, tries to get single coverage. He's got it. There you go. That's Tony oh. Hill, and we're going to have a ball game tonight. So don't. <laughs> Tony Hill scores uh, once again his fourth of the year, and he's having a super season, Don. You can count on it. Well, when you see this on the replay, and you'll see what Tony Hill did. Watch it from the end zone, Don. Little slight roll, you see him hiding there behind Fitzgerald, the center. A quick little fake one way. 
Yeah, and on the other side, which we really didn't quite see, Hill gave him an outside fake, moved right down the middle and had him beat by about five or six yards. This is a guy that, of course, Landry's been talking about for years since he's been there. He thinks he's one of the most unique receivers he's ever seen come into the league based on basically one talent, the ability to adjust under a long, uh, a long ball. He has that ability to move like that center fielder. Raphael Septian on for the conversion for Dallas. And unlike Cockroft, Septian puts his first attempt through the crossbar. 20 to 7. Cleveland over Dallas, but you better hang around. Do better. <laughs> Nancy Hamilton will cross our path today. We're S Mark. We own the companies that supply her peanut butter and turkey, rubber gloves, and baby nurses. filters motor oil gasoline we're s mark a big company with a big stake in nancy hamilton and in you now there's a way to type that gets your paperwork done right and done faster no problem typing from lanier you want your work back error free no problem corrections are made here instead of on paper want to move a paragraph no problem add or delete a sentence no problem. Once you're typing back sooner, no problem electronic typing from Lanier. Call your local Lanier office. An NCAA college football header, Penn State, Nebraska. Headlines, regional action. Check local listings. Then Ohio State battles UCLA Saturday. Also, you'll be seeing Central Michigan. And they're going to get Florida State, or rather... Uh, Florida State against Virginia and Virginia Tech against Western Louisiana against Arkansas State. Regional college football. Excitement, we've got it here tonight in Cleveland. Septian kicks off. Keith Wright is deep. He got the Browns good field position on the opening kick off the game. And he finds another gap and gets out over the 25 to the 27 yard line. Uh, he is a good little kick return. He really is. He'll get out of or said Texas, as a matter of fact, via Memphis State. He says, everywhere I've been, they've been telling me I'm too small to play. And he keeps playing right along. Comes from a real sports family. He likes that kickoff and punt return. He got him high. Well, they got him in the fifth round a year ago, and he has really given them a new dimension. Well, I tell you, from 52, Bob Shaw and that special team who was zooming in on him, the number one draft choice out of Tennessee. Cleveland, they scored on each possession. Sykes with Rucker in motion. Hand off, Greg Pruitt. And Greg Pruitt piled up after a pickup of a couple of yards, giving three at the 30-yard line, where it'll be second down and seven. Bob Bruning, Randy White in there defensively with Dallas. Sandy, this should be an interesting series. Let's see if Sykes starts to try to play it cozy or if he continues to throw the football. Because Dallas can get back as quickly as we just saw. I think that's true. I think it's also true. A team usually comes into a game with a few plays that they really feel very confident they're going to work. And obviously they had some different kind of plays they threw them and they did work. Let's see if they got some more. And here's one right here. Greg Pruitt tries to cut back and down goes Greg Pruitt. Good defensive out there. I think it was D.D. Lewis. Yeah, it was. D.D. really Along having with a Harvey Martin. D.D.'s having a super year. Yeah, D.D. really is doing a good job. He's got more experience than any linebackers in there and he really is having a good one. He has a way of being where the ball is. Look at that crowd as we take a panoramic view through the cameras under the directorial aegis of Fred, uh, Fred Chet Ford. <laughs> I remember he that. would have been better if he were Fred. Uh -huh. Because Pete can't peace. Third down, seven. Dallas, set, looking for the pass. We're going to get it. Sight sends all of his backs out and overthrows Cleo Miller. And now we are going to see Cleveland punting for the first time tonight. That'll bring out Johnny Evans. Still didn't get a real good pass rush that time, Frank. They usually double Randy White in the middle there. Harvey Martin is, goes to the outside. His best rush is to the outside. So far, Stiles and Coles on the other side have not really been able to put that good rush together. I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys don't try to blitz a little bit more as the, time, as the game goes on. Bring those linebackers in, help them get a better pass rush. You saw Tony Hill waiting for Dallas at his 32-yard. Johnny Evans leading the NFL and punting after three games with a 45.8-yard average. And just when you say it, he gets one off the side of his foot. But it does take a bit of a Cleveland bounce. But Dallas is going to have good field position. They're going to be 
starting their series from their own 37-yard line. Roger talking it over with Landry. And I, you know that getting that one big bomb has got to give added life to Dallas. Thank you. Tom always said, you know, this has happened several times to him before. He just keeps emphasizing, I'm sure, what other coaches do, too. You know, stick with what we were planning to do. It still is going to be good. Stick with what you're planning to do. Go back out and do it. And well, since he's calling the plays, I imagine he can do it about as well as anybody. On that touchdown play, Ron Bolton was suckered, came up, left Charlie Hall all alone to cover Tony Hill. No contest. He was 15 yards off. Lyle Alzado back in there defensively for Denver. Tony Dorsett. Goes over the left side, gets across the 40-yard line, out close to the 43-yard line, a gain of five, it'll be second down and five, and Clay Matthews in on the stop. We have no prior information as to why Robert Newhouse is not going for the Cowboys tonight. We have not seen him tonight, it's been Scott Laidlaw. <laughs> uh, what area code, though? Funny, isn't it? I like that. Jay Saldi, and now number 87 for the Cowboys, can play tight end or flanker. This is Laidlaw, and Laidlaw short of the first down at the 46-yard line. It'll be third down and one. Dick Ambrose, defensively for Cleveland, number 52, the middle linebacker. And he's a good middle linebacker, a 12th round draft pick. They got him in 75, and he's, you yeah, he don't do a lot of reading about him, but he is just steady. He's always there around the ball. I think an indication of how good he is is they've got a number one draft choice that's trying to knock on the door and he can't get in. That's Robert Stonewall Jackson, and he is really big. Rich Dimler comes in defensively for Cleveland, number 92. Cleveland anticipating the run. They get it. And Dallas gets the first down of midfield as Scott Laidlaw follows Tom Rafferty and Jim Cooper on the right side. Charlie Hall defensively for Cleveland. Now, don't you get a sense, Skipper, of Dallas purposefully going to work, playing exactly as Don said, according to their game plan. And that's what that big bomb for the first Dallas touchdown meant. It meant the game getting back to normalcy for the Cowboys. Kind of sent a little quiet that's kind of settled over the stadium here just for a moment. A realization uh -huh. that this Dallas team is too big to be run out of the ballpark and too good. Ball right at midfield, Staubach to the air. Tony Dorsett has it. And a little move, and he's close to another Dallas first down at the 40-yard line. Clay Matthews, Dick Ambrose, defensively for Cleveland. Short by about a half a yard. I expected Tony to have a good night tonight. We were uh, talking to him in the hotel the day before the game. He says, you know, I've got a lot of my folks, my friends, and my family here tonight. And he said, I really, see, I always play better in front of them. Only takes a little more than an hour to drive here from Pittsburgh. Hey, right here. I told him I knew how it was. I like to play better with Jeff and Hazel when the stands, too. Helps a little bit to have folks there. Second folks. about a half a yard. Tony Dorsett, of course, missed the opening game against St. Louis. Broken toe in the middle of July. Gets the call again on the draw play. Alzado can't hold on, and Dorsett uh, has the first down as he slithers to the 35-yard line, and that's a good description because this little man, when he plants that foot, goes for yardage. He is about six inches off the ground. Zia, Zia, Zia. Just running right off of that thing. Alzado almost got him for a couple of yards lost that time. Couldn't quite get there. I'm sure that... Knee has something to do with it. Let's see if he can push off of that left knee. And you see that he didn't even try that much, but that was off the close. Cowboys close to the 35 of Cleveland. Again, the score. Cleveland striking suddenly. Lead the Dallas Cowboys 20-7. And so this is Scott Laidlaw getting the call. And Laidlaw is close to the 30-yard line for a pickup of four. It'll be second down and six. I tell you, I like the way he picked up that ball. Did you see the move he made? Got it outside, realized, no. It, it cut back, did a good job. It's a design play that way, Howard. It, it, uh, is it? Yeah, they, they give them a look of a play that they run a lot. And the tackle will go out and try to block on that defensive end. And when he receives pressure, the offensive tackle falls back into the middle of the line. And that give that little head fake on the inside and bob out to the outside. Good information, old boy. Thank you, sir. Second down, six. Dorsett right, turns again. it on to the outside, and he makes it look so effortless. Tom Darden out of bounds, but he's inside the 20. Another Dallas first down, and Dorsett, who, as I told you, suffered from that toe injury, is coming back to form. He had over 100 yards against the Bears, overshadowed a little bit by Walter Payton's performance of 130. 
And he's back to what he was last year and the year before when he gained over a thousand yards in his first two years as a cowboy. 59 seconds left in the first quarter. 27 points already scored. This is action football. Here was. Good block by Scott Laidlaw on that last run. Pearson goes out to the right. Jay Faldi, number 87, is the short wing back. Bottom of your screen. First and ten. Starback. Looking for six, and he throws oh, it away. Good. Mike St. Clair was on Starback. No flags down. So Starback avoids the loss. So a little bit of... Uh, well, it was kind of a mixed-up move back with Saldi to come out of his position to go on a motion play to the other side, which enabled them to really read that thing in a hurry. Didn't fool anybody, and he had him wrapped around his neck over there. I think they were fouled up from the very beginning. They had uh, Billy Joe Dupree in there and Saldi yeah. and Cosby, and Billy Joe all of a sudden ran off before the ball was snapped. In any event, it's second down and 10. The ball at the 19-yard line. Seconds ticking away in the first quarter. Scott Laidlaw. Drops the ball and it's picked up. Oh, Did boy. Clay Matthews, I think, the linebacker. Either Matthews or Darton, I couldn't tell either. That could hurt Dallas. They were moving. And it's Clay Matthews. It one gets the turnover by Scott Laidlaw. Big turnover for Cleveland. Oh, that's a good move from the outside over there by Mike Sinclair who kind of stripped that ball loose. He's the guy that we saw wrapped around Rogers' neck to play before. Very active and two plays. And Howard, I kind of agree with what you said earlier. Cleveland had better not go into a shell. They this came out throwing the ball on first down. They hung up a lot of points. That's an interesting conversation right there, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> Stop saying, how dare you tell me that? They can disagree. They did at the end of last week on the game-winning play to Tony Hill. More on that later. Rucker in motion. Sight on first down. Going to the air. Reggie oh, Rucker has it. Good. And he moves it out to the 25-yard line. Close to a first down. D.D. Lewis took him out of bounds. And here's the man who made it possible. Breaking up that late law fumble. USC, of course. But that's what Cleveland has to do. The play you just saw. If they try to get cozy, if they try to cling to that lead, they're going to pay for it. But this way, they can keep Dallas off balance. There are only 44 seconds left in this quarter. Ball at the 25-yard line. Dave Logan splits left. 85, Reggie Rucker, bottom of your screen. Again, Greg Pruitt, where's 34? Play action by Brian Sykes. And, oh, now that's a play offensive move. This is Dave Logan, the man who hung up a touchdown with Brian Seif, and he is really some gifted athlete. Frank, the real trick is he came back for the ball. Goes down a little curl in route. You can see him. He just stepped up right in front of it. Come back to that ball. How many times do you hear receiver coaches say that? Come back and get the ball. Good job, Dave. In the whole history of the National Football League, do you know what team has the winningest record? The Cleveland Browns. That's right. They've got a tradition in this place, I'm telling you. And Cleveland is going to let the time expire here in the first quarter. Two seconds, one second, and that's it. And what a big quarter it was for Cleveland. They lead the Dallas Cowboys 20 to 7. <laughs> you two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Where's that husband of yours? Okay, watch your back. Coming through. Is that all you carried up? Is that all? This is Lowenbrough. So what are we celebrating? This is the second year we're sharing this house. I didn't think we'd make it through the second week. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be Lowenbrough. Yeah, I shouldn't say this, because you might think I'm serious. But here's a good friend. Lowenbrough. RCA wants you to see the right color. The color of Jupiter, captured by Voyager 1. Does your television automatically show you all the subtle, intense, and mysterious shades of a world never seen in this world before? If not, see Color Track 1980 by RCA. Color Track 1980, with eight automatic color systems designed to lock even subtle shades of color on track. RCA is making television better and better. Harvey Firestone wants you to fleet a taxi cab to improve your tire. Cat rolled up a lot of miles every day, and Harvey thought that was a good way to judge a tire. Well, that hasn't changed very much. 
how it works on the road is still a pretty good way to judge a tire. And right now, American drivers are rolling up over 160 million miles every day on Firestone 721 radial. Now, Harvey would say that, I'll tell you something about the 721. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Cleveland, Ohio. They're fired up tonight. The Browns, as we begin the second quarter, first and ten, the ball at their own 44-yard line. Reggie Rucker splits out to the right. Logan is having a big night. Along with Brian Sipes, splits to the left, and Mike Pruitt gets the call. And Mike Pruitt cuts back over the 45 to the 48-yard line, a gain of four. It'll be <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Told you it's tough to get out of. <laughs> It's tough to run on Dallas. That flex defense on first down, although oddly, certain men have been having very big running games against the Dallas Cowboys this year. Otis Anderson and Pate. Second and six for Greg Pruitt. And Pruitt short of the first down at the Cowboys 47 yard line by about a yard. It'll be third and one. I think we're seeing, uh, as we look at the stats on the screen, an example of what usually is a reverse uh, now, well, jargon in football, they say, okay, you got to establish the run before you throw. Cleveland, I think, came out and established the pass first, and they did pass very well. Now they're coming back, and Dallas seems to be a little bit hesitant on defense in against that run. They've run twice, picked up nine yards. Calvin Hill, number 35, in the Cleveland Browns short yardage backfield. Third down, a little more than a yard to go. Rucker, Prince Wright, and here comes Mike Pruitt. And Pruitt gets the first down. Here it is, the 45-yard line. Cliff Harris hustling up there to make the stop. Bob Bruni sliding over from middle linebacker, but Cleveland has a first down. Mike Pruitt has become a steady, solid, tough back to go together with Greg Pruitt. He is, incidentally, an excellent lead blocker, and he is capable of 100-yard games himself. You fans who've been watching the Browns know that. Sure is. He didn't play much his first two years, but last year he got over 500 yards, and he has really come into his own. Had a big day against Baltimore a week ago. On first down, Seif is going to the air again. Look out for Henderson. That yeah. overthrows Ozzie Newsman, but he paid the price. Tom Henderson really popped Brian Seif. There's the guy who settled down, who stopped with all the uh, palava, all of the talk. An exceptionally good Fletcher because of his speed. and see him come into the outside. I mentioned a moment ago and I think we'll see more of it this kind of uh, defensive play by Dallas because really they're not getting the kind of fast rush they're used to from the front four and Thomas is recognized on the team as the best blitzer they have and trying to discard a little bit of that Hollywood in that's a good idea won't hurt ball at the 44 yard line second down 10 Theo Miller is in there number 30 he gets the draw play Good move by D.D. Uh, Lewis. into D.D. Lewis, who read it quickly, moved back, and there's a pickup of four. It'll be third down and six. They you want to know what D.D. Lewis means to a team and to this Dallas team, Don. You look back through the history of the Cowboys, and you'll find in some of the most important games they've ever played, D.D. Lewis was involved in the key play that caused the turning point. Remember an intercept against the Rams in a playoff a couple of years back? You're a lot better at those things than I am, but I know he's been a good football player for him for a long time. As long as since you were that's right. Passing down for Cleveland. Dallas has six defensive backs in. They can either put them or drop into a blanket zone. Tight. Going for Newsom, and Newsom was tangled up with Randy Hughes. The crowd doesn't like it, but there's no fly. Tight doesn't like it either, as you could say. Well, he again has plenty of time to throw, and Newsom was really open down there. Hughes had him in pretty good shape. Let's see if we can pick it up again. Ozzie, as we've already mentioned, the telecast. He's a good, but that's pretty good position, though. But you see, Ozzy just pulling away from him a little bit. And really, uh, Manny Hughes has good speed back there. Maybe a little faster than Charlie Waters, the guy's replacing. Tony Hill awaits the punt of Johnny Evans on fourth down. Tony Hill back there because Butch Johnson has been on the reserve list following a broken finger. He ordinarily would be deep. Tony Hill indicates the fair catch, but he hopes it goes into the end zone. It does. So Dallas will have the touchback. They'll have possession at their own 20-yard line. The 12 in the half of Dallas down 20 to 7. Winners don't have time to wait, so they rent from Hurt. 
Nobody can get you into your Fairmont LTD or other fine car faster than number one. With the Hertz number one club, you just show your credit card, your license, sign and go. No wonder the presidents of over 80% of America's top 500 companies carry Hertz cars. Hiya, Juice. Hey, Jimmy Connors. Hertz, where the winners rent. Soon after they moved in, it began. George and Kathy's bedroom. The eyes at the window. The sewing room. So many flies. Get out. Get out. You will believe the Amityville Horror. Rated R. Starts Friday everywhere. The most important fight this year, undefeated Larry Holmes battles the WBC number one ranked contender, Ernie Shavers, Friday night on ABC. Folks, that should be the best night of boxing in a long, long time. On the same card with Larry Holmes and Ernie Shavers, Sugar Ray Leonard against Andy Price, a tough opponent, a valid opponent, and Roberto Duran, and you know about him. Here's first, Gip. First and ten. Dallas has the ball following the touchback at the 20-yard line. Two tight ends are in. Billy Joe Dupree and Doug Cosby. Laidlaw. Who fumbled the ball inside the 20-yard line on Dallas's last drive. Gets the call and he gets a couple of yards. He'll be second down and eight. Kind of like going back to a receiver after he's dropped one. You try to go back to him as quickly as you can. He didn't wait very long in giving Scott that ball again to handle. First and long comes in, bringing the play into Roger Staubach, who's talking once again with Tom Landry. Second and eight. Made Law and Dorsett. The motion man is Saldi. Here comes Dorsett. Yeah. Dorsett turns up field, gets the first down. He had a tremendous block by Tom Rafferty, number 64, right? He saw it, a good shot coming right at you. He's beautiful to watch. He doesn't run, Dan DeRue. He glides. He does. If he could have gotten Burton Lawless from out front, he'd have picked up about 10 more. That was his offensive guard that was trying to give him some hep, H-E-P, hep. He <laughs> wasn't quite quick enough to get out there and do much good. Dorsett carries it to the 33-yard line. First and 10. Dallas maintains their two tight end offense. Cosby's 84, Billy Joe Dupree is 89. Quick toss. Laidlaw out in front and Dorsett gets over the 35 and the flag goes down as Dorsett goes down at the 37 yard line following a gain of four. Could have been anything from a face mask to holding and clipping and all those sort of wonderful things that go on in a pile like that. And I was right the first time. Face mask. Face mask. Very good. Thank you. Got a sharp eye tonight. First penalty of the night. And we have 10.42 remaining in the first half. Our referee again, Cal Lepore, and we'll have an opportunity to hear from Cal. Face mask, 57. Defense, first down. Clay Matthews, defensively for Cleveland. Dallas has a first down. They're on 42-yard line. Tony Hill back in the lineup now. Baldy stays in there. We got Billy Joe in a little motion. Staubach yeah. fires to Billy oh. Joe Dupree. Over the middle, short of the first down. The ball moving out to the 48-yard line. And here's the lead. Yeah, there's seven. It'll be second and three. These guys are open, but they're not open very much. That's the why Frank Kerb was right. He fired that ball in there, and that's how it got there. You just looked at Sam Rotigliano. Part of the Brooklyn connection that uh -huh. constitutes this Cleveland ball club. Modell, the owner, Rastigliano, the coach. Al Zato, defensive end. Among those here who grew up in Brooklyn. Dupree and Cosby, the rookie from Santa Clara, back in there. Two tight ends. Laidlaw gets the call. Cuts back to midfield. Short of the first down. Near the 49-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Rich Dimmler, a rookie out of USC, number 92, in there defensively to trip up Scott Laidlaw. Good down the line pursuit that time, too. The ball was going away from him a little bit. Kind of dealt with his uh, block here at the line of scrimmage and slipped on down. What we got there in baseball, folks? 
Pittsburgh back in first place. Won the first of two, five to two. At the moment, leads the Expos by a half. They're tied 1-1 in the second. Third down, a little more than a yard for a first down. Dorsett, the oh, middle one, boy. gets the first down. As he gets the short yardage call and moves to the 46, it'll be first down and 10 for Dallas. Oliver Davis there to make sure Dorsett did not travel any further. Houston now two games behind, losing the first to Atlanta. Cincinnati beginning to cement its position, especially with its victory over Houston yesterday. And the Braves, a troublesome hitting lineup leading in the second game. We'll keep you abreast of all the scores as we go. The scores in baseball, that is. Dallas very conservatively moving the foot. That won't last long. How did you know? <laughs> How did you know? That is it. That is Gosh. Drew Pearson oh, what inside catch. the five. First and goal, Dallas. Oh, oh, that's that's what you call. Well, Landry calls the signals, but the two of them do get together. And sometimes Staubach doesn't go with Tom. Well, but you can excuse me. No, Frank called it exactly right. Look at this catch. They have catch. been setting That's Cleveland up. That's an incredible catch. Yep. That is a very difficult That's ball to catch. I think it's the most difficult, Frank, unless you talk about low and behind you. This one is a little bit high, but you see he goes again. He just has another one of those good floaters. You see him put his eye on that ball and never let it go. Put it over his left shoulder, running when it should have come over his right shoulder. Heck of a catch. Oliver Davis, who was right there, had no chance. And should you have just joined us, it was all Cleveland. They had a 20-0 lead at one point. Dallas came back, long touchdown pass to Tony Hill. They're threatening. First and goal, the ball at the three-yard line. Dorsett. Oh. Drops the ball. Oh-ho. Oh. Can you believe that? Brown comes up with it. Oh. And it's Dick Ambrose, and Dallas has fumbled away another opportunity. Oh, and look at Tom. Of course, it's the problem that Tony Dorsett always has. Look at Tom. It was Dorsett who tossed up the football and a tremendous break for the Cleveland Browns. Dick Ambrose, the 12th round grab choice the gift told you about. All right, let's just see. He never did just never did get a hold of it. Roger looked like slipped a little bit before he was given the ball back there. Ambrose could have gone off the way had not <laughs> Roger made the tackle and skin and laid low. We'll be back in Cleveland. There's several reasons you have a fumble. Look at this one. This is not a very good exchange. You see, Roger, right to the last, reach as far as he can. Little off balance. That's the problem. You got a guy with a quickness like Dorsett had. I think he was in motion, but it's just that extreme quickness coming to the outside. That was where they didn't have the good apples. You see that ball bounce just right for Ambrose, and there he is. <laughs> there he is. We mentioned earlier, he is usually around the football. Reminds me of what Don has always said about Cleveland through the years. They bend, but they don't break. <laughs> You've got me saying that about everybody. No, just Cleveland. Ambrose takes it out to the 22-yard line of the Browns, and they avoid another possible touchdown. Dallas was moving earlier in the first quarter and fumbled. Tight. On first oh. down, he tries to go to Mike Pruitt, and he's pounded by Bob Brunick, the middle linebacker. What a hit that was. You can see that little delay not setting up real well. There were too many guys standing up back there in the backfield. They were going to try to fake a run. That one didn't go. You saw the linemen stand up, but there's just a little bit of that creeping effect. That screens are run when they look just like a run. Go back out and do it. But I still like the fact that they weren't sitting on the... No, that is, I think that's really, you know, they must come in. They came in throwing, so they must feel they have a better shot at throwing than they do running. Shot of Alzado's knee on the sideline. Yep, getting some ice. Second down, 10. The ball at the 22. Cleo Miller, who was a starter in 76 and 77 before he broke his wrist a year ago and was replaced by Mike Pruitt is in there, but the handoff goes to Greg Pruitt. Greg Pruitt. Miles put out somewhere around the 24-yard line. A gain of a couple. It'll be third down and eight. Randy White with a little help from his friends defensively. He got to know Greg Pruitt down in the Superstars. He'd won over $100,000 down there. And this <laughs> past year, bad. <laughs> this past year, he won it all. And I think one of the things he did, he was impressive in the weightlifting, which you wouldn't suspect. 275. And he ran his sneakers on that asphalt, 9-7. So he can dart. <laughs> nice man. Third and eight. Looking for Logan. This time, he overthrows as Aaron Kyle was forcing low. Gives cut quicker than he wanted to do, and it'll bring up fourth down, and out will trot 
Donnie Evans to punt for Cleveland. You know, Frank, you see Logan put a hand up and touch the ball. You've reached a point. So spectacular has been his play where you expect him somehow to hold on to the football and pull it back into his chest. There's Tony Hill, and he should have an opportunity to tack on a return. In any event, a fair catch would give Dallas good field position. 7.39 remaining in the first half, and Dallas down 20-7. Kicks it low, the kind you run back. Good move. Whoops. And Tony Hill takes it inside Cleveland territory at the 38-yard line. 35-yard cut by Johnny Evans, who came in tonight, leading the league after three, and he's not kicking well tonight. We'll be back. It took explorers three years to circumnavigate the globe. The great iron horse took weeks to cross the continent. Yet today, people move all over the world with the freedom of the wind. One morning on this continent, that evening on another. Boeing jetliners. They've done more to jet the world together than anything ever made by man. The world feels a whole lot better when the people of the world all get together. The world feels a whole lot better when we all get together. Look! It isn't such a big world. See? All the places and the faces. Feel! All the loving and the laughter. Bring it up together. Next time you take off in this small world, remember to fly Boeing, the world's favorite way to fly. The world feels a whole lot better when we all get together. An NCAA college football doubleheader, Penn State, Nebraska, headlines regional local listings, and Ohio State battles UCLA Saturday. And in addition to Penn State versus Nebraska, you'll see Navy versus Illinois, Wake Forest versus North Carolina State, Miami of Ohio against Central Michigan, Florida State against Virginia Tech, and Southwestern Louisiana versus Arkansas State, all capped off by Ohio State against UCLA nationally. Cowboys following a bad punt by Johnny Evans. And a good return by Tony Hill. Has the ball at the 48-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. They still trail by 13. On the first down, Dorsett gets the call. Pile up at the 45-yard line, right side of the Cleveland defense. Gain of a couple, it'll be second and eight. Richard Dimler should be at the bottom of that pile. It's a very important series, it seems to me, for Dallas, Don, because while they feel, I'm sure by now, they can do pretty much anything they'd like to do with the Cleveland defense, the two critical turnovers stultify them. Actually, turnovers, yeah. And it kind of stultifies you, and you begin to get a little lackluster. The interception, by the way, broke a string of uh, 148 coming into tonight. Roger had thrown about an interception as we watched Laidlaw turn the right side to the 42-yard line. It'll be third down and five. And by the way, Roger was going for the record of Don Meredith, who what upon a time to 166 passes for Dallas uh, without an interception. Is that right? Roger had thrown 148 coming into tonight before the interception. I threw a lot of screens. <laughs> you and Lenny Dawson with the sideline hits. Lenny, a lot of screens. Throw to Perkins. That's right. <laughs> Third down five. The ball to 43-yard line. Ron Springs is in there, number 20. Preston Pearson, number 26. They are the receiving specialist for the Dallas Cowboys. Draw back out of the shotgun. Wide open, Hill, as was Preston here, and he could have hit anyone he wanted to downfield. And First and 10 at the 25. And Drew had a step on it, too. I've never seen so many receivers open in one pattern, but you're right, Frank. They were all open. He came back there. It seemed to me that the Cleveland defense got bunched up there in the middle. Let's see what they're trying to do. They didn't get through. All this cross and stuff, you see... Uh, I can, Pearson open right there, and there's Tony Hill coming across the middle. I can guarantee what play you're going to see by Dallas on the next third and five. Yep. Well, do. we'll throw it till you cover it. What you're saying is what we said. They seem to be able to do pretty much what they want to do at this point with the Cleveland defense. Except score. That's it. They have the ball at the 25-yard line. Inside six minutes remaining in the first half. This is Tony Dorsett, and he slithers his way down to about the 23-yard line, 22-yard line. Give him a gain of three. Well, they mark it at the 23, so it'll be second and eight. Clay Matthews in there defensively. You saw Tom Landry give the play to Herbert Scott. Comes into the ball game. 
with the play for Roger Staubach. If the Browns are going to blitz, which they're not really a blitzing team, this is the time they usually do it. The 20-yard line on in, you can take a look at those two safeties back there, see how they're set up, get a little idea. And this will be one of those times. And they like to send is Clarence Scott, number 22, but he is backing off. Staubach with a bootleg. Didn't fool Jack Everett. And he goes to Billy Joe Dupree, and he drops the ball, but I think they had marked oh, it down. It was down. That's the profit goal. Short of the first down. Really a good move by Roger just to get the ball off. Jack Gregory didn't get fooled at all. Great big old tall fellow there looking at him right in the eye. Let's see if we can pick it up again. A little fake play action sort of pass. You see Shirt go one way, then they adjust, but Gregory didn't move at all. And Charlie Hall was all over the tight end, Billy Joe Dupree. He read it all the way also. I think they knew Dallas had that play, don't you? <laughs> Third down and three. Ball on the 18-yard line. Dallas really needs to get in on this series. If they get turned away, they will maybe just give this whole thing up as a major frustration. Laidlaw. And he is hit not the line of scrimmage. Maybe gets a yard, and it'll be fourth down. That was a good defensive play. Charlie Hall again was out there. If anything, Roger may have thrown that ball a little bit early. It's not unusual to see that kind of play in a short yardage situation where the quarterback can roll out and have the option to run a throw. Tom, yeah. Excuse me, Don. Tom had looked it over, and I think he, he was seriously thinking point. about going yep. with the run. He saw it was a little more than a yard and a half, and he sent the field goal team in. That means Raphael stepped the on. He's doing the right thing. I don't know exactly what to get the point. Not all printed out, but I'll guarantee you he has it in his head, and he knows that his odds of getting one and a half yards on the... 17-yard line are not as good as he'd like them, so he says, I'm going to go with that yeah. Holding the ball is Danny White. He's also a quarterback with a broken thumb, but he has been working out as a passer, but we do anticipate the field goal. Clock. And it's one of those nights for Dallas. So far, it sure is. And it, this was not over yet. Whoa! <laughs> Oliver Davis. Picked up the ball. We don't know who got the big call on it. But Cleveland has turned Dallas back once again. Like we said, they bend, but they don't break. They bend, but they don't break. They are really frustrating Dallas at this point. I think that was a, a, a critical situation for Dallas and that they have been down there several times, and each time they've come away with nothing. Three turnovers. You would like fumbles, this, the block kick, uh, and then, of course, the interception for the touchdown. So, in effect, four key turnovers in the first half. And Cleveland has the ball at their own 28-yard line. And to be giving up three points. Really good field position. They have 3.30 remaining in the half, and they give the ball to Greg Pruitt. He almost gets around the corner, but he's upended out there. And you don't ever want him to turn that corner because before you look around, he's 40 yards downfield. Hey, uh, Curtis Weathers has been performing some great plays for Cleveland on the special team. Blocked that kick. He's that rookie from Mississippi. We've seen him down under punts and kickoffs tonight. I saw Greg Pruitt wave to the bench that time. I think he hurt his ankle a little bit. It was a good tackle by Bob Bruni coming over. You see Pruitt come out now. He's looking just a touch. And Calvin Hill comes in, number 35. Pruitt. Moves to the sideline. Second down, six. Ball up to 32. Here's Calvin Hill. And Hill out over the 35 to the 36. Short of the first down. It'll be third down and two. That's a man you have to like and you have to respect. Certainly one of the finest running backs the Cowboys ever had. Kelly, who dreamed of playing tight end, but instead used as a running back. Made a mistake, went to the World Football League, paid for it, then to Washington, and then with the career apparently over, back with Cleveland and doing great spot duty for them. On third and two. Tight, intercept, hangs it up and... Good no, ball. and Cook Harris can't hold on. He was in a battle look for the ball with Ozzie Newsom. Ozzie did his job. He made sure that Cliff didn't get it. That's right. And D.D. Lewis again. He was in there pressuring sight. Made him hurry the throw on the blitz. 2.09 with the clock stopped. And Dallas will get the football back. Plenty of time. Dallas with three timeouts. Cleveland with three timeouts. Now you made the key point about Evans. He's been punting poorly tonight, Frank. Let's see what he does now. Tony Hill can break it if he gets a shot. Tony 
Gino standing at the Dallas 30-yard line. Cleveland with a long count, hoping to draw Dallas offside. They do not. Hill will have an opportunity. He's got some fast feet, hasn't he? Oh, he's quick. Yeah. Oh, boy. He's got quick feet. Woo and he avoided about five rounds, but only gets the ball out to the 28-yard line. There's the two-minute warning. Uh, time actually had moved to 158 remaining in the half before play was stopped. And we'll be returning to Cleveland in just a moment. Now you've just sold me on a great typewriter, but I work with numbers. The Lanier No Problem typewriter does more than just type. Financial typing, no problem. It even adds and subtracts. I do our personnel list. Will it help there? No problem. It sorts alphabetically and numerically and gets your work back faster. The Lanier No Electronic Typewriter. It does more than just type. You survey where the land is wild and unforgiving, filling in empty places on maps that until now have been almost unknown. But now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you got the time, we've got the beer. Miller Beer. Miller Beer. America's world champions, Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner, skate for gold this February in the 1980 Winter Olympics, exclusively on ABC. Going to take it on the next timeout. We're back in Cleveland, 158 remaining in the first half. And the Dallas Cowboys, thoroughly frustrated throughout this half, trailing 20 to 7 at the first and 10. The ball at their own 29-yard line. Sawback comes immediately out in the shotgun. The Cowboys three timeouts. Cleveland in their prevent defense. Five defensive secondary men back there. Sawback has the time, but no receiver. Now he has to throw into a crowd going for Preston Pearson. He was well covered by Charlie Hall. Yes, sir. Second and ten. This is a part of the Cowboy offense that's really been pretty effective this year. Roger really is, I guess, I would say really personally responsible for their three victories. He's brought them back almost every week, and a lot of it's had to do with this type of offense they run. They run it very well, spend a lot of time working on it, as all teams do, but the Cowboys have been very, very effective in this before this year. And they have had to be because they have really not had their running game in any sort of shape. Nevertheless, number one team in offense after the first three games. Second down, 10. Ball at the 29-yard line. 152 remaining in the half. Saw back again from the shotgun. Again, he has the time. Goes to ball. Pearson, and he does run. You won't see that off. You really don't, because that ball was right there, well thrown. Looks like he took his eye off it just right at the last. Big third down situation. Defensively out there for Cleveland, Richard Jones, but Sawback knows he should have had that one. Third and ten. Dallas with three timeouts. Should they be able to put together a completion? Cleveland has all of their defensive secondary men back. They've moved into six men now because Ricky Jones, who can play linebacker, is also a good defensive back and a backup safety man. He's in there wearing 47 for Cleveland. Out of the shotgun once again. Drawback in trouble. Oh. Down he goes. Jerry Shirt. They just really overpowered him, put a good defensive rush with all four of the front guys up there. The You're linebacker's talking. pretty well covered. He didn't have a chance to look at anybody. You talk about a fired-up team. We told you about Jerry Shirt, the great veteran from Oklahoma State. But what's interesting is the play of the underpublicized Cleveland linebackers tonight. We've seen Charlie Hall get at least four critical calls from Frank and then Clay Matthews on a number of occasions. And Dick Ambrose picking up a key fumble by Dorsett and Sawbuck. All right, Danny White will punt, and Cleveland could get field position. They've got the top punt returner in the AFC back on his own 40-yard line. That's Keith Wright. Little mix up there. And they are going to get called for delay of the game, and Cleveland will have even better field position following a five-yard assessment. That's really not like Dallas to do. You know, they seem to be a little bit rattled out there. That things didn't work real well. Vinnie Barnes, it appeared, was lined up in the wrong position. He was trying to bring himself up. Really 
back in. The lay of the game call. You're yeah. so right. This is not. <laughs> they don't usually do that. They like to see. No, they don't do that. I imagine they'll have some uh, time next week to be talking about these things. You're right too, Frank. With a minute, 12 seconds, it does really put Cleveland in a very good position to add to their lead already. Lead. Offense, fourth down. All right. Danny White will give it another go around. We'll start that 30-second clock again, of course. And this time, Chief Wright has moved up to his 45-yard line. Again, Cleveland with three timeouts and 112 on the clock. Cleveland with a 20-7 lead. They exploded in the early going. Dallas looked like they were coming back. The turnovers killed them. Good cut by White. This is right from his own 40. And right. He was trying well, to make his progress stopped at the 43-yard line. Let's go quickly to Howard Cosell. Frank, it's a positive honor and privilege to have with us the President of the United States, the Honorable Gerald Ford. And sir, as an old Michigan center, your evaluation of what you've seen so far. We've seen a great football game. The uh, Cleveland Browns have been very aggressive. They've made the break, taken advantage of them. On the other hand, uh, that was a beautiful pass from Roger Staubach to Tony Hill. You can't rule Dallas out even though they're 13 points behind. We haven't done that, sir, not yet. Well, quickly, let's go back to Frank. Yeah, we thank you, sir, for being with us on first and ten. Cleveland, Brian side, deep. Going for Ozzie Newsom, and it's picked off. Eddie Barnes. Eddie, Eddie Barnes, the left cornerback. Dallas in the prevent defense. Now flag goes down as Barnes gets it back up to midfield. 46 seconds remaining. On the clock. I don't know, Frank. It may be wrong, but I think this penalty might be on uh, Harvey Martin in attempting to block after the interception. Let's see if we get a call on it. Personal foul indicated, and will be marched off against Allen. Notice that Sight kept throwing, even with only seconds left. 46 sec 46 seconds remaining. I don't blame him with a guy like Cockroft on his side. He needed to hit one, and he was pretty well close to that field goal position. All right. Things are not what you think going Dallas's way. Here's referee Cal Laporte. Personal foul after the interception. 65. Dallas first down. Against David Stahl. Let's right. go back to Howard. We're back with former President Gerald Ford. I take it you viewed with glee Tom Dawson and ex-Michiganers interception for the touchdown. He was a great ball player at Ann Arbor, and uh, he came through, grabbed that ball, and went, to, what was it, about 35, 40 yes, yards? Sir. Well, um, he's done a great job, but I would say the whole Cleveland team has been aggressive and fantastic and it's been a great evening. Thank you, sir. You look superbly well. Great to have you with us. Staubach. Go to 26, his usual receiver, Preston Pearson. And Preston Pearson gets close to a first down. I believe he has it at the 45-yard line. 35 seconds on the clock. And Dallas calls timeout. They'll have two remaining. 35 seconds remaining in the first half. Cleveland ahead. 27 will be back. Being retarded doesn't mean you can't reach out and hold on to life. I'm Billy Joseph P. of the Dallas Cowboys, and these are some people I care about. At this United Way agency, every day is a challenge for these kids, and hopefully a small victory. I've been blessed as an athlete in my life and giving back some of, this, some of these blessings that have been given to me to people who are not as fortunate as I am physically. Uh, I guess uh, it gives me a sense of responsibility toward them and it will feel a lot closer to the program and to the people involved in it. Uh, if you can manage to, to go in and, and to visit a United Way agency or some type of, of affiliated agency that, uh, that deals with retarded people, I think that you and yourself will find some place in your heart to, to go out and, and do what you can to help these people too. in Cleveland. The Dallas Cowboys have the football trailing 20 to 7. They have the ball inside the 45 yard line. They have two timeouts remaining. 35 seconds on the clock. And maybe well, two of the finest
been moving the ball with little time on that clock. We're on the field tonight. Brian Stipe and Roger Staubach. Staubach out of the shotgun. And Roger unloads it to save the loss in the general area of Tony Hill, but he had really had the pressure. Jack Gregory forced him out of the pocket, and then Nicky Sims was there and Mike St. Clair along with Sims. I'm looking at Jack Gregory tonight, and I don't understand why a team like the Giants let him go. He's playing well out there. The time he's been in, three times we've seen him pressurizing the quarterback. Incidentally, a halftime highlight tonight. We will have, as always, but a special feature. Pete Rose of the Phil. Came to bat tonight, got a hit, and he became the first player in Major League history to have gotten 200 or more hits in 10 different seasons. You'll be seeing that at halftime. You see the time remaining in the half, 27 seconds, second down and 10. Saw back again from the shotgun. Firing oh. through Pearson. Oh. And oh. Pearson is down at the 30-yard line, what and Dallas immediately calls oh. timeout with 19 seconds remaining in the half. I don't really, I don't think you can throw a ball any better than that one was thrown. The distance, the man, you talk about the distance. That's too well. We're watching Tony Hill. What he about the catch? Drew the Pearson stretch. was. Excuse me. Well, the catch is great. I happen to think that I was looking at the quarterback there. He's been getting some pressure. He almost got knocked on his can the time before. <laughs> Step back up in and drill it 45 yards on the line. That ain't a bad throw. He <laughs> hung it on a string. And he, he, did. he has one timeout to work with. The ball at the 30-yard line. They always say, you know, it's, it's only his job just to get it down there, right? If you get it down there, it's up to you to well, get it. Well, look at those stats. Roger's having a, a good night. The problem has been the two fumbles. There was the one pick off by Don for the intercept, and then there was the blocked attempted field goal. Now they want to get it in a little closer, of course, for Septian, who's not the longest place kicker in the league. They, they They'll try a couple of more times to get it in the end zone without trying to set up that field goal. I think really right now they're still thinking about scoring a touchdown. I think you're probably right about that. But uh, you're probably right that they'd like to get it a little closer because that's the end of kick. I'm sure. Yeah, that makes both of us right. Why not? And don't clown with the Browns, you understand? <laughs> a little disheartening news for the Cleveland Browns and their fans. Greg Foote is going to have a knee examined at halftime. We saw him walk off under his own power. He took himself out of the game, and the report is that he has hurt his knee, and it will be looked at at halftime. Until last year, he was always a durable little water bug, as I call him. Why do you call him that? Because he's a scatter runner. He goes in all directions, the way a water bug does. Oh, okay. 19 seconds. The Cowboys out of the shotgun. Have a first and 10. Ball at the 31-yard line. Draw back. At the time, he went Tony Hill deep. Oh. And he hit him, but Hill oh. could not hang on. He yeah. threw a beautiful pass that between Oliver Davis and oh. Randy Rich. Now that was a magnificently thrown pass. No, it really is. I've been talking to some of the coaches, and so was I actually spent some time with Roger, too. And it's, it's always easy to say, you know, that uh, when they start getting 36 years old, as Roger is, well, this is his best year so far, but he has all the stats to back it up. Look at that ball, man. Not even a ripple in the thing, and it did hit Tony right in the hand. Of course, he was... Had some defensive people around him. Now, don't say he dropped it. It's just one of those things. He didn't drop it, did he? Well, yeah, let's say he could have caught it. It was there. One time out for Dallas. Second down, 10. The ball inside the 31-yard line. Again from the shotgun. Cleveland fakes the blitz. They pull out of it, but they still get pressure. Stop back. <laughs> tried to hustle it, and he hit play Matthews. And Matthews was shot. I, I, I can really understand, you know, Matthews is standing right there in front. But let's look at the trouble that Roger gets in before he gets up in a position to throw. There's something about playing quarterback. You can feel those guys come around there. He didn't even see Matthews. He's drilling it right there. And you see that what happened to Roger right after it, he got hit from the back. So here's Septien. He'll have to kick on third down because the clock indicates only six seconds remaining in the half. So the field goal attempt by Septian will be somewhere around 47 yards. Danny White will be holding. Not easy. He's 4-4 four four inside the 40. He kicked one 51 yards, a career record for Septian last week against the Bears. Didn't have the distance. And he misses on the right. Time has expired. And you'll hear a roar because the Cleveland Browns have the Dallas Cowboys 20-7 at halftime. Stay with us. Highlights and a look at baseball history. Dale Nichols is a good little league coach and a good neighbor. 
I really enjoy working with kids, getting them started in the right direction. I enjoy working with people as a State Farm agent too, especially with their life insurance. Usually I know the families pretty well. I handle their other insurance, so I'm better able to advise them on life insurance. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's life insurance, the State Farm way. Buick introduces the 1980s Century Sedan, our little limousine. A brand new century filled with room, comfort, and elegance. Powered by a responsive and efficient 3.8 liter V6 engine. A century which by all appearances looks as though it should cost a small fortune, but which in truth does not. Where to, folks? Home, Jimmy. Right, Mom. Buick's new Century Sedan, our little limousine. Rico! Ah! Jose Ponzi takes on his arch enemy's gang with help from a girl named Kat. Then, ah! Angie buys a new dream house that becomes Brad's nightmare. And the new landlord's moving in on all the women of Three's company. Then the taxi gang gets a new driver that even Latka can't understand. Tomorrow. This is Jeff Maynard. Chopper 5 is standing by to show you what happens downtown after Monday Night Football. Chopper 5 is live right after the game on Eyewitness News. I'm Bob Albert, Vice President of Sales for Sharon Steel Corporation. Sharon Steels are not raw materials. They're carefully engineered products. Here's an example. For a manufacturer of golf club shafts, Sharon developed a special alloy steel that could be formed into thin wall tubing to make an ideal shaft in terms of weight, strength, and rigidity. Now most golf club shafts are made of Sharon steel. To order your Sharon steel, call Bob Maloney in Cleveland or Lynn Houston in Canton. I would follows the game. This is the WBC World Heavyweight Champion Larry Holmes exploding against his last title challenger. This is Ernie Shavers knocking out Ken Norton in devastating fashion for a title shot. Friday night they meet in the most important fight this year, the WBC World Heavyweight Championship. And starting the evening off live at 8 Eastern, undefeated Sugar Ray Leonard goes for his 25th straight win. Also, Roberto Duran, considered by many pound for pound the best fighter today. Home Shavers, Leonard, Duran, Friday night on ABC. We're back live, Cleveland, Ohio, the halftime score, Cleveland 20, Dallas 7, the scoring like this. Dave Logan on a 23-yard pass from sight. The conversion failed, 6-0 Cleveland. Ozzie Newsom, 52-yard pass from sight. The conversion good, 13-0. Tom Dodd, number 27, 39-yard interception. Touchdown, kick good, 20-0. Tony. A 48-yard bomb from Storback, thus the score, 20 to 7. At Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia tonight, baseball history made. So let's go back to Philadelphia for what happened. And it was like that in Veterans Stadium. That's Billy Fanatic going through his thing. And we were in the bottom half of the second inning with two outs and none on. And the score tied one and one. Pete Vukovic pitching for the Cardinals, then Pete rose up. He took a pitch, a call strike, and then this. This smallish fellow, one of the greatest competitors in the history of baseball, and there it was, a shot into right center. So he became the only man in the total history of baseball, as you look at that remarkable competitor, and the crowd. The only man to collect 200 hits in 10 seasons. The card won 72, but so won. And now again at halftime, live in Cleveland, and the Browns bending but not breaking, leading. Now let's turn to yesterday's NFL highlights as provided by NFL Films. Beginning with Schaefer Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts. Two powerhouse teams, the Chargers against the Patriots. Action in the first quarter. 7-0 New England. Patriots ball first and 10. The Chargers 10. And that's number 44, Don Calhoun running right. And he goes all the way in behind. Fine blocking for the score. Pass 14. Chargers nothing. Then... In the second quarter, as you watch Calhoun burst in there, the pass lead went to 17-0. To they had the ball second and five on their own 46. Number 14, the angular quarterback, Steve Grogan from Kansas State. 
to the all-world tight end, number 81, Russ Francis. What a catch. And that brought it to the charge of 14. It set up a John Smith 31-yard field goal. Pass 20, charges nothing. Second quarter, 20 to nothing. Charges fall, first and 10, pass 19. Dan Faust throwing to Johnny Jefferson, 83. 20 to 7, pass. In the fourth quarter, the lead it dwindles, it dwindles to 27-21. Charges fall, third and goal, pass nine. Number 14, Dan Faust back to try to hit Johnny Jefferson, 83 again. But not this time. The ball picked off by the fine linebacker, Steve Nelson. That saves the victory. The pass won it, 27-21. And a couple of guys couldn't have been happy. Owner Billy Sullivan and tight end Russ France. Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati, Ohio, the number one Bengals draft choice, Thompson. Jack Thompson, the throwing first quarter action. 7-0 Cincinnati. Bengals ball, second and 10, their own 32. Thompson back to throw in the pocket. Good protection. Downfield. Billy Brooks, number 82, gets the ball. But look at that. He strained his knee on that catch. Couldn't run in for the score, which he might otherwise have had. They had to settle for a field goal. 10 to nothing, Bengals. They rolled it up to 24 to nothing. Second quarter action. Houston ball, third and 11, Bengals 35. Dan Passerini, number seven, throws deep into the end zone to double zero. Kenny Burrow, he corrals the ball. 24 to seven, Cincinnati. The Oilers fought back. Fourth quarter, 27-24, Oilers trailing. Cincinnati ball, third and one, Oilers 35. Thompson back to throw. Now watch closely. The ball is picked off by the reliable linebacker, Tip Blaze. It was Greg Bingham who intercepted. Well, the Oilers tied it up. They went into overtime. 38 seconds left. And ball, third and four, the Bengals 12. Tony Fritch, number 16, trying for the field goal. And hitting it. Watch this. The ball hits the upright, goes through. Dallas won against St. Louis the same way. The Oilers stole it 30 to 27. Mile High Stadium where they always have a sellout. Denver, Colorado, the Seattle Seahawks against Denver. Third quarter action. Seattle leading 20 to 10. Seattle ball second and eight. The Broncos 13. Jim's on the South Fourth quarterback. Number 10 passes to 84. Sam McCollum. Falls over the goal line, Seattle 27, Denver 10. In the third quarter, the Seahawks have moved it up to 34 to 10. The lead seemed insurmountable, but Denver fought back. Second and goal, the Seattle 2. Craig Martin throwing, watch this. That's the tackle, number 70, Dave Sturdy. A wide receiver in this formation, eligible to get the pass. 34 to 17 became the Seattle lead. Third quarter, 4-24. Denver still fighting back. Denver ball, first and 10, the Seattle 35. Craig Morton to number 80. Rick Upchurch, touchdown. That made it 34-31, Seattle. And then in the fourth quarter, with 34-31 the score, Denver ball, third and goal. The Seahawks won. Rob Lytle busting in. And Denver with an incredible comeback victory. 37-34 over Seattle. Denver has lost only to L.A. But as for Los Angeles, they're at Tampa Bay, Tampa Stadium, and going against that surprising Tampa Bay team. This is second quarter action. The Rams leading six to nothing. First and 10, Tampa Bay at the Rams 15. Doug Williams, the quarterback, hits number 87, Larry Mucker in the end zone. Tampa Bay took a seven to six lead. Still in the second quarter. And it was the young man from Grambling College again second and six the la 29 this time to jimmy giles touchdown that made it 14 to six and tampa bay beat the once mighty rams 21 to six that's coach johnson he's from the college looks like he's worried about his problem dandruff I wish he'd ask me. Mr. Owens, I need a shampoo. Never tried Tegrin. Can it really work on my itching and flaking? Well, in a national survey, three out of four dermatologists judged Tegrin's medication effective in fighting even problem dandruff. Mm -hmm. I'll give it a tryout. <laughs> hey, how's that dandruff problem? Tegrin's a winner, Mr. Owens. Prove it to yourself. Tegrin works. Those magnificent men and their flying machines. Let's take a run. Got you, Dad. Some guys just can't get enough of flying, even when they fly for a living. Call them dedicated co-insurance in the friendly.
friendly skies, we call him Captain. 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 Now let's turn our attention to some of the outstanding individual accomplishments yesterday in Buffalo. The Bills were hosting the New York Jets. Joe Ferguson had a great day, but number 80. Watch closely. You'll see a tip on this play. The ball picked off by the rookie wide receiver from Clemson. What a day he had. He caught 10 passes. Here's another one. Jerry Butler, number 80. 10 passes, 255 yards, four touchdowns. And it was through his efforts that the Bills crushed the helpless Jets, 46-31. And at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, another Clemson alumnus, number 89, the huge tight end, Benny Cunningham, out last year, so much of the time injured, but back this year. And this, the game breaker. The Steelers have been trailing the Colts, but this brought them the game-winning touchdown. There's the score. At Arrowhead Stadium, they talk about experience in this league. But the Clemson kids are showing them you don't need it. The Chiefs rookie quarterback from Clemson, Steve Fuller, completed 9 of 17 passes like this one for a touchdown. And he had help. He had help from a fellow named J.T. Smith. Help like this. The punt by Oakland's Ray God. Watch J.T. He broke a big one a week ago. Now he's going to do it again. Excellent downfield blocking. The quick taking advantage of the opening gap. The great speed. Then down the left sideline. 88 yards. Touchdown. Kansas City shredded the once powerful Oakland Raiders 35 to 7. There was another old friend yesterday, the big bull, Larry Zonka. The who the Giants said couldn't play anymore. Couldn't play? Look at this against the Chicago Bears. This was Larry Zonka the way he used to be. Three touchdowns. Carried 15 times for 73 yards, equaling his 1973 AFC Championship game performance. The Dolphins 31, the Bears 16. And, of course, a man we saw this way a couple of weeks ago, sitting in the stands at the Orange Bowl, the great little field goal kicking die salesman, Garrow Yepremi. The Dolphins had let him go. But he came back yesterday. He came back against San Francisco for New Orleans, kicked a field goal, an NFL record, 17 consecutive field goals. Stenerud and Cockroft had shared the prior record. And in Minnesota, the Vikings went into overtime with... And then young Tommy Kramer out of right threw to Ahmad Rashad, number 28. He caught nine passes on the day for 136 yards and two touchdowns. And this touchdown won it for the Vikes, 27-21. That action, of course, yesterday. But meanwhile, we have what could turn into a barn burner. It's been close all night. The halftime, the score, Cleveland 20, Dallas 7. Dallas, of course, a victim of their own mistakes. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is being brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Buick, for Riviera and the mid-sized Century and Regal, to the 1980s smaller Buicks like Skylark. You'll find very fine cars and very good thinking. We'll be ready for the second half kickoff after a word from our local station. John 8 is enough, Nicholas is really growing up fast. Are we going to have some girls? And on Charlie's Angels, a drug dealer turns Kelly into a junkie. I have been shot up with heroin. Then Ross disappears from Vegas, and Dan's new boss wants him dead. Wednesday. Beatlemania is playing to standing ovations across the country, and here's why. <laughs> the live music made it. I really feel like I'm seeing the Beatles. Visual images. Marvelous uh, visual, musical, and the calls of the Beatlemania, 
see Beatlemania live at the Palace, October 10th through the 28th. Call 523-1755 and charge your tickets now. It's the sellout. Central Cadillac is out to sell more than 250 1979 Cadillacs, the largest inventory in Ohio, to make room for the 1980s. Central Cadillac will sell out to you. Our prices are falling. Huge discounts earned by achieving the factory sales goals are continuing. We're ready to deal. The sellout ends soon at Central Cadillac. So hurry before we're all sold out. Central Cadillac. Catch Tic-Tac-Doe tomorrow night at 7.30. <laughs> All right, Frank, guess. Guess. Uh, well, Ray Beck wore 65. We had a couple of 65s. I better fish around and find out. 42, of course, Charlie Connolly. 16, well, yours truly. 29, Alex Webster. Kyle Rowe, 44. 65. Hmm. Ray Beck. And every one of them watching tonight. Big Red in Jersey. Kyle in New York. Chuck down in Mississippi. Clarksdale. Yeah, Frank and I know that. All right, Brian. Brian Sites. And he turned on this huge crowd of an anticipated 80,000. In the first quarter, hit Dave Logan. Beautiful pass, corner of the end zone. Throwing the ball on first down. Then Cleveland ran into a little bit of trouble. Dallas moved the ball. They had a couple of fumbles. They had an interception. They had a blocked field goal. And anything and everything that could have happened to Dallas is just about happened to them tonight. Cockroft will kick off. Brings it deep along with Steve Wilson. And this will be Wilson who had a touchdown against the Bears. Called back last week of 84 yards. Steve Wilson, a rookie from Howard and the son of a former great player with the Rams in Cleveland. Touchdown Tommy Wilson. Got some good moves there, and he goes to the outside. He is fast. Dallas was the first and ten. The ball up to 31, and Don, you've been in that locker room, and things went like this with, with Dallas. What did you hear from Tom? Well, you really hear almost the same thing. They they really cut out the chatter. They cut out the business. They go right back over, see if any changes, any adjustments that have been made. They didn't expect try to go over that, but usually they go back and say, "Let's go what we had going in." They worked awful hard to get ready for the game, so they'll know. And never any panic. No panic. Tony Dorsett. Maybe they should panic. <laughs> and I'll tell you what's happening to Dorsett. He, you fumble the ball a few times, and every time you go up against the team, they're going to test you. They're, they're, every second man in there is going to pop that ball. They're going to try and jar it loose, and it just compounds a problem if you have one. And that's a good comment because that's what Dorsett is thinking about, and that's what self-inhibits his play. You also look and see how did Mickey Sims get back there in the backfield before before Tony got to the line of scrimmage. You check through things like that. How's he back there? Somebody ain't blocking. Second down, 10. Late law, and he moves out close to the 35-yard line. Four is going to be third down and six. That's a big play because you know that Don Landry wants this team to get off the mark in a hurry. And this first series, again, is an important series. There's we have had several for the Cowboys in the first half, and we have one again here. Into the ball game on third and six. The passing down for Dallas comes Ron Spring, Jay Saldy, and Preston Pearson. The receiving core, if you will, of the Cowboys in the passing situation. Roger out of the shotgun. Cleveland brings in their fifth defensive man. Roger hurried again, and it was Mickey Sims once again in on Roger Staubach. Getting good pressure by Mickey Sims and Mike St. Clair both. Of course, you see Shirk around there. Shirk is a guy you kind of expect. He's got the reputation. They'll try to double him in there occasionally. You know, Sims isn't really. He's more of a player against the run. He came up in 77 as a fourth-round draft. Strong against the run out of South Carolina State. The men they expect to get the pass rush from are Lyle Alzado and Shirk. But Sims is turning in quite a ball game tonight. Fourth down, Danny White. And there's Keith Wright at the 25-yard line. Dangerous punt return man for Cleveland. White oh, hangs Danny. it high. Wright was going to call for a fair catch. He never got the hand up. Flag is down. And keep in mind a new rule. Don't know whether that was applicable on that particular play, but 
Number 47 in the Browns, that would be Ricky Jones, is gesticulating like he may have caused the foul. Sure, you can see that clip was right in front of us, Don. Well, if, uh, I think it does, uh, it applies to the new rule because it was not one of your real obvious sort of clips. I'm sure that uh, we'll have it again. Maybe you can take a look at it. But that would that be where the guy's blocking uh, below the waist or he's just pushing from the back? That was just an out and out clip, I believe. I thought he just pushed him. I didn't see him from the back. Yeah. Right in front of him. Personal foul. Clipping 27 on the return to first down. He meant 47. Watch this. 27 is Tom Dodden. Yeah. He's not the special team. There he is. Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones. And the ball is moved back to the 14-yard line. There it is. Any contact from behind, of course, the call is clipping. So Cleveland, deep in their own territory, but still with a 20-7 lead. This is Calvin Hill. Calvin Hill moves out over the 15 to about the 17. Giving four yards, it'll be second and six. And Greg Pruitt will come out, test his knee that he hurt in the second quarter to see if he can go back into the lineup. Well, let me tell you, if the threat of Greg Pruitt on the ground is not in there, Cleveland is in for trouble. And let's watch what Sipes does. Deep in his own territory. Let's see if he plays the venturesome kind of game he did throughout the first half to the very end. Ball marked closer to the 18, so make it second down and seven. Here's Mike Pruitt, and Mike Pruitt gets out over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Short of the first down by a long two. D.D. Lewis in there on the stop defensively for Dallas. Call it third down and three for Cleveland. These two teams went wild in the first quarter. Since then, there's been an obvious and natural letdown. Although in fairness to Dallas, they moved the ball well, seemingly at will, except for the interception and a touchdown by Dodd. A fumble on the Cleveland 19 and a fumble on the Cleveland 2. Keith Wright comes in for Reggie Rucker. Has to be considered passing down for Cleveland, but they play it conservatively. And they are close to a first down at the 25-yard line. Mike Pruitt carrying the ball. That was a good the first. Good Lord, we used to call it a delayed trap. One of the reasons that you run a play like that, you find a defensive end, the tendency is go to the outside, which is Harvey Martin. It is a passing situation. Harvey's usually going to take that outside move. Try to come back in and close off Randy White on the inside and break up a little hole right between those two guys. And from my overhead, the Goodyear Blimp America from Houston, Texas, gives us a beautiful view of the stadium on a great night for football. Our cameraman, Norm Olson, is up there with Captain John Moran from Texas. Tomball, Texas. On first and ten, tight play action. Going deep, Rutgers there. Ah, oh, and it's off the fingertips. Oh, boy. I love that call. That's a good really call. Do. I thought he was trying to get his backs out because he had uh, Mike Pruitt open on the other side. And Rutgers came out on there, and Kyle here, little fake to the inside, ran right through it. That's the way to play this game. Just overthrew him. You've got to feel that that's basically in the area of Cliff Harris, the free safety roaming over there. And Cliff is really aggressive, tries to play those runs first. Drop back out, a good route by Rucker. It wasn't really over the middle, but it was up deep. You can almost hear Kyle say, where are you, baby? Where are you? Give me some help, baby. Where is somebody? On second and ten. Pipe again, play action. Look for Rucker again. This time it comes off the fingertips. High over the arms of Rucker. Benny Barnes is in position for the defense. Had it been on target. Uh, by the way, Frank Howard, uh, y'all may not know this, but this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience, you see. And any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without express written consent of the National Football League, the green knowledge is prohibited. That has never been expressed, but okay. But the key thing here is that the Browns are not playing safe. They didn't connect, especially on the first one, to Rucker when he was open. And they've got themselves in a third and Look ten. at that blitz Dallas coming in there. Oh, oh. And that's a delayed bitch by that guy. Uh, Tell him Thomas, Henderson. Thomas Henderson. When Dallas gets an offense in a split formation or that wide set, they figure they don't have, nobody can block him. It's a little delayed blitz to see the back go out. And now here comes Henderson, and he's one of the few linebackers who has that kind of speed that can come in there from the left and board as he Ooh, put it to him. What a hit. 
Randy White was fairly close, number 54, but the hit goes to Henderson. There is a the guy that was clocked as a linebacker, Langston, at 9-5. He can motor. Johnny Evans will punt. He has not been punting well tonight. Wade Manning is standing at midfield for Dallas. Wade Manning, the rookie free agent out of Ohio State. Wade of Evans. Kicks it low. Yep. Manning has a tap. Bobbles the ball and gets back to the 45-yard line. Flags are down all over the field. Oh, starts the flags on Wade Manning. A lot of laundry. Again, we've seen so many flags on the different punting teams, kicking teams this year. And we have an off on clip. Those against Dallas this time. Wade Manning is kind of an unusual story, and he really came into Dallas at the last minute almost by saying, well, I might as well give it a try. He's basically a baseball player. That's what he was. Yep. Not a bad one either. Oh, well, he did all right. But he figured if he didn't get drafted in the baseball draft high enough, he wouldn't have a shot. Let's see what we got working here. Personal foul. Clipping 34 and a The first down. Aaron Mitchell, another rookie out of the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. Guilty of clipping. And there's Greg Pruitt. He's on the sidelines. We don't know whether we'll see him or not. Maybe we'll find out when we come back in just a moment. Goodyear Tiempo, official tire of the 1980 Winter Olympics, brings you Art Devlin, Vice President, Lake Placid Olympic Committee. If you're coming up here for the Olympics, let me tell you, with our crazy weather, there's no picnic driving here any season. That's why I drive on Tiempo. Tiempo is the rain tire, snow tire, sun tire, one tire that does it all. College football on ABC, and it can make for a very fun Saturday. Look at Brian Sipe there, that's a little ammonia. He says, let me get my head clear. He really did. You see Mark Miller and Evans both warming up on the sideline. Penalty against Dallas. They still have good field position, their own 39-yard line. They would have been in Brown territory. Sawback right to the air on first down. Billy Joe Dupree wide open. Oh, oh. Uh, Dupree, up in it, he has a first down. 43-yard line of Cleveland. Oh, how that man can pick a team up for him. It was laid right in between. He had Charlie Hall out there. He had really pretty good coverage. I think it's Charlie Hall. And Ron Bolt, number 28. Let's see if we can pick it out. Actually, it's 27. Sorry. Yeah, you know, it's Ron Darden. You're right. Just head right on in there. Had pretty good coverage. They were back in that position. Clarence Scott, number 22, is in there. Billy Joe found that opening and a big first down. Solid tight end. Not as spectacular as a Russ Francis, maybe, or a Dave Gaston, but solid. Aloy Blackwell in there. Dorsett moves out of the lineup. The handoff goes to Scott Laidlaw. And Laidlaw is pounded, and it was Ambrose moving in from his middle linebacker position. Stops at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. And Dallas really has not had a problem moving the ball. They just keep hurting themselves. Penalties. They've had the two turnovers on fumbles. They've had an interception. They've had a blocked field goal. Moved the ball well all night. Mark Miller is warming up on the sideline for the Cleveland Browns. You saw Brian Sipe. No, but you just busted, Frank, you just busted enough of it. Dallas has been frustrating itself. They're ready to get back in this game. Second down, 10. Baldy in motion. Kicks off to Laidlaw. Oh! There's good for Cito. There's a fumble. Bobbles the ball, and Cleveland's saying they've got it, but I think it's going to be blown. No, they called it dead. But I tell you, those Cleveland linebackers, again, we must call your attention to them. You haven't heard much about them, have you? Not nationally, not about Ambrose, not about Matthews, not about Charlie Hall, but boy, are they hitting. And this is a game of hitting. It's been, well, these teams were so wild in the first quarter that there has been, as I said, a natural letdown since. And yet you have the feeling Dallas Explode. You see a little coaching tactic oh, going yeah, on here. There. They sent in four, almost sent in three. Dallas sent in their offensive passing unit. Cleveland quickly shuffled in extra defensive backs. Third down and eight. There's a play we thought we'd see again. And there's a wrestling match. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the 28 yard line, I think, is Tom Dart with his second interception. Oh, yes, oh what a What a player. Look at him throw that ball in the air. Jordan. Intended for Tony Hill. Well, once again, they're 
really covering him up on that green. Uh, your nickel defense. He's trying to get the ball in to Tony Hill, but just love Darden was looking at Roger all the way back. Didn't have much. He just sent back there. That's good defense. Somebody's coached these guys. They're in there in good shape, and we're going to be right back in just a minute. This is the 1980 Buick Skylark. I like the five. Although I don't always carry that many. I like the front wheel drive, too. Uh, even though it doesn't rain or snow that much around here. And the good mileage is certainly appreciated, especially right now. But you know what really makes the Skylark just perfect for me? I've got one. Buick Skylark. It just might be the perfect car for you. You pilot ships out to open seas through currents that can run you aground. And the only map you trust is the one you keep in your head. Now comes Miller time. Time to head back for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. When it's time to relax, we've got the beer, Miller Beer. Tuesday, Joe and Mac take on a college that turns its back on an athlete when an injury is his career. Where is Leon Spinks? Somewhere in this land of ours, he is looking for Lyle Alzado. Uh -huh. But on Friday night, Larry Holmes against Ernie Shavers, and you'll see it here on ABC. Brian Sight stays in the ball game. First and ten, Cleveland. Ball at their own 28. Screen. Could be trouble. Oh, 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 the Cowboys boy. in a blitz. Is the best time to have the screen on. Dee Dee. Leo Miller to the 45-yard line of the Cowboys. D.D. Lewis was the man on the flip. He stumbled either on Harvey Martin's legs or somebody. Left him wide open. Good move by Brian Sight. Reads it. He sees him coming in the other side. He had that one set up and slip out to Cleo Miller. There's nobody there. Now you talk about a key series as you look at Cleo Miller and a good block from 64. Hey, what about that tackle by Cliff Harris? He went under 64 and that brought him him, torpedoed him, and thus enable attack. 45-yard line, 27-yard pickup on that play. Cleveland moving the ball. They've been struggling ever since the first quarter when they exploded for 20 points. Dallas has been beating themselves. This is Calvin Hill over the left side. Calvin Hill goes down. After a gain of about a yard, it'll be second down. Nine, Randy White on the stop. I'm glad you keep emphasizing, Frank. And look at those turnovers. That tells the story to emphasize again what Frank just said. Dallas has been frustrating themselves. But you can't take credit away from Cleveland. Now the screen pass, and they just told you, Don and Frank did, how the best time to use is on a blitz. I want to say something about that in just a moment. On second down. Tight gets good protection. Looks out, finds Mike Pruitt. Ha <laughs> oh. was right there with Mike Pruitt. Uh, there's a gain of four yards. It'll be third down and three. It'll be third and three. Harvey Martin pressuring Brian Sykes. You see Mike Pruitt come back on that. No man teaches that more than Sid Gilman, the genius of the past, the present, and still the future, as you look at Mike. And you'll see now in the Eagles offense, they'll go out 17 yards, come back three, and Jaworski will hit the receiver. Well, Pruitt came back in that manner, though, for a much shorter distance. Third down, three. Ball at the 38-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. A reverse. This is Ricky Feature. Feature does not get the first down. Good tackle, Randy Hughes. It'll be fourth. Good recognition by Larry Cole, who delayed it a little bit, made him go wild. Point I wanted to make about the screen, Don. Vince Lombardi used to say every team has a key play in its offensive category. The other side knows it's coming. But you've got to perfect this play so that even though they know it's coming, you'll make it work on execution. And so the Cleveland Browns with Jimmy Brown would use the screen and not necessarily on a blitz. And everyone would know what was coming. But the way Cleveland worked it with Jimmy, you couldn't stop it. Johnny Evans. Wade Manning deep for Dallas. Evans hangs it high, looking for the corner. He doesn't get it. It'll be a touchback, and Dallas will have the ball at their 20-yard line. 39-yard punt. 550 remaining in the third quarter. And Dallas will once again try and regroup from their 20-yard line. We'll be right back. 
dress. There's evidence right there that either your wife or children are in the audience. <laughs> My wife is. There you go. I knew Andy would do that. Eat your heart out. Ah, she's darling. Yeah. Dallas has the ball. First and ten. Ball at the 20-yard line. 5.50 remaining in the third quarter. Dallas down 20. Battling the Browns and themselves. Here comes Tony Dorsett. And Dorsett breaks tackles, gets close to a first down out to the 28-yard line, make it to 29. Tom Darden in there. And Leo Blake off Charlie Hall. That's right. Don, I was trying to get him in there. Hall. You've got them all in. you got to hurry. And those linebackers have been all over the place tonight. Those Cleveland linebackers. So saying, Dallas must feel like that general who said, we have found the enemy. <laughs> he is up. <laughs> Not over yet. Second and one. Laidlaw. There you go. Right up the middle. Putting his head down to get the first. And all of a sudden, he found something extra. Out to the 39-yard line. First and 10 for Dallas. Gentlemen, because as you got Laidlaw, who just had that run, Key nature of the pennant race dictates giving this score. The pennant races. Kansas City scored to run the second. They lead the Angels 1-0 in Anaheim. Gore against Nolan Ryan. California up by three games. Laidlaw and Dorsett. will have not playing tonight. He has a sore ankle. It happened in the St. Louis game. This is Laidlaw on the screen. And Good. down he goes. Oh. It was Dick Ambrose who roamed over there from his middle linebacker spot, breaking it up, holding leg off to a gain of a yard. It'll be second and nine. Didn't they handle that screen beautifully, they, Don? They did. I, it is a difficult block, but he had a man out there to block him. I believe it was Rafferty that was there in that position to block him. So you give you give Ambrose even more credit because he was he had a guy that could have knocked him away, went right through it, and brought him down for hardly any gain at all shot from the Goodyear blimp hovering high overhead on a beautiful night for football in Cleveland. Temperatures in the 50s. A crowd of around 80,000 turning out tonight to watch these two unbeaten teams. One of them will not be tonight. Drew Pearson in motion. Staubach. Boot legs it. Now looking for a friendly blue jersey and he turns on oh, the ball. Oh no, I can't believe that. Gary Shirk, I believe. <laughs> I really can't believe that. Gary Shirk comes up with it as Charlie Hall popped Roger Staubach. It's always a danger when the quarterback scrambles. The oldest maxim in football, or one of them. And there was a linebacker to pick it off, as Frank said. There's Charlie Hall, 59. He pulls the ball out as he drags Roger down, and there's Jerry Shirk. Cleveland has the football. Dallas has it over with three fumbles tonight. So more and more of these Cleveland linebackers come into prominence tonight. Ambrose from Virginia. Charlie Hall, Clay Matthews from USC. Sipe on first and ten. Reggie Rucker is there. And short of a first down, but he's in Dallas territory at the 47-yard line. Defensively, it was Aaron Mitchell for Dallas. Jerry Scher. You know, there was a night in 1970 when Don and I, before the first Monday night game ever, went up to Joe Willie Namath's apartment in Manhattan. And Don began to interrogate Joe, one quarterback to another, and Joe said, we're going to work on the new kid from Oklahoma State. And now he's one of the best and has been for a decade. Second down, one. And off goes to Calvin Hill, and Calvin Hill gets the first down. He gets his make for a couple of years. 69, 70, I believe it would have been. He had over 1,000 yards a year rushing for them. First down, 41-yard line of Dallas. And Cleveland, who had trouble after that first quarter moving the football, has all of a sudden started to move the ball against Dallas. Here has been a strange evening, hasn't it? It is. And it's been a strange evening in the National League in baseball. I'll get to that in a second. Ball at the 41-yard line. Let's see the moon. Break through it. Will not be coming back into the game, we've been told. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
by Aaron Mitchell as he gets to the line of scrimmage and he'll get a yard out of it. It'll be second down and nine. Calvin, Calvin saying, where'd he come from? <laughs> wow. Well, he remembers the old Eli song, our team will never fail. <laughs> Leo Miller comes in, replacing Mike Pruitt. Second down long. This is also a down when Dallas likes to bring everyone but the coaching staff on the blitz. If they get in that split backfield, you can count them coming. But they're not in it this time, so you don't know for sure. Reggie Rucker in motion, coming towards you. Sight has Rucker. Mm. Rucker close to the first down at the 31-yard line. Big play right there. Quick play. Frank. Major League Baseball. Bucks won the first of two from Montreal, five to two. Took a half game lead in the National League East. Bucks lead in the second, four to two in the fifth. Houston lost the first of two to Atlanta, fell behind Cincinnati by two. Atlanta in the second game leads seven to nothing in the seventh. And suddenly things look very dark for the underdog team. The Astros and the Expos. The chain gang brings out the ball. <laughs> Someone's been watching their own Edward. Exactly. They brought the chain gang out because referee indicated that Cleveland is about six inches short of the first down at the 31 yard line. 136 remaining in the third quarter. I don't think it's by accident that they've been throwing over an area where. They've had a rookie to work on these last couple of times. Let's see what they go here, a big one. Give it to Calvin Hill and let him jump. Mike Crutt has the first down. Follow was all right, you had the right notion. Yep, same thing, just get it over yep. there. And Matigliano. Telling Cleo to Miller to pass something on to Brian Sipe, which he promptly does. Cleveland now has a just inside the 30. By the way, Don, a quick note. Sunday yeah. afternoon, if there's still a pennant race, ABC will be covering the game. But uh, if we do, and if there is still a pennant race, it is mandatory that you appeal. Oh, that's terrific. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That's really, I like that. you got to be kidding. <laughs> Brian Sykes, going deep. No flags, and there was a foot race between Benny Barnes and Reggie Rucker. Reggie's saying, Benny, trip me, or try to, but no flags. Usually, it's the other way around. Benny Barnes saying, Lynn Swan pushed me off. I, I didn't really see what was going over there. I was watching the second there. Let's just see what happened. Oh, nothing. No, no he cannot tuck him after five yards. And that's yeah, what Reggie but he barely saying. touched him. <laughs> Again, he's really getting good. And that's the way to do it. So Francis would tell you that. Second and ten. Green. Ozzy Newsom. Thomas Henderson. Super tackle by Tom Henderson. And Ozzy Newsom. Well, a lot of people will tell you he does not go down that easily when he's running with the football. And Tom is holding his hand. Tom hurt his left hand apparently. And this is a critical play because it could conceivably take them out of field goal range where Cockcroft. Usually the steadiest field goal kicker in the league as you look at this again. Cockcroft could put them out of range. And that's it's Cockcroft facing the sidelines. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports at the end of the third quarter. The score Cleveland 20 down to 7. We'll return for the fourth quarter in just a moment. On ABC's World News tonight, Catholics in America, the church in turmoil. I have seen more change in the last 15 years than I think took place in the church in the last 450 years. Abortion, divorce, and liberal forms of worship. Issues of turmoil the visiting Pope will face tomorrow on ABC's World News tonight. This is Jeff Maynard. Chopper 5 is live, and our coverage of Monday Night Football in Cleveland continues right after the game on TV5 Eyewitness News. Dental care. That's America's fastest growing health care benefit. That's why your Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans have dental care programs that can be built right in as part of a group health care package. And that's for many smaller companies as well as large corporations. Your Blue Cross and Blue Shield representative can tell you about the advantages for both employer and employee. Advantages that make dental care easier and more economical to receive. Group dental coverage. 
Now that is value added by your Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans. You gotta be quick on your feet to have a curve for the friendly skies. They keep you hopping with non-stop to more places, including California. United's got the most non-stop to California. More than any other airline. The most non-stop to California from those magnificent folks in the friendly skies. Fly the friendly skies. Fly the friendly skies. Catch Greg Pruitt tomorrow morning at 8. From high overhead, a crowd of over 80,000, 80,123, and that has boosted an NFL in-stadia attendance to a new record this past weekend of over 850,000. They're watching an interesting football game, an electric in moments, dull at other times. Dallas troubled by their own mistakes, and Cleveland right now looking over third down and 16. As we begin the fourth quarter, the ball the 36-yard line. Flag is down. Cleveland should have a free play. Reggie Rucker at the 15-yard line. They don't need it. They got the first two. down. Benny Nine Barnes two. saved it. Uh, Reggie Rucker, as he has been doing for the past two or three years for Cleveland, a uh, touch reception. Good move by Sipe that time, too. And just sent him back there, waved that thing uh, to open up. I don't know how Reggie got so wide open. He just kind of drifted through the middle. Benny Barnes certainly was trying to come back in there. Nothing fancy, Barnes. Lost the step when he made his move. Good move by Reggie coming across, but a good move by Sykes and hanging in there. And but again, the, ball the key point, John, the face of a man, of a coach in the player, working with him. And then that's what Rodigliano. There's Greg Pruitt, the right leg. That bodes problems for Cleveland in games ahead, or at least seems to. Still no major pass rush from Dallas. Down. The ball just short of the 15-yard line. Ricky Feature in motion, hand off, Mike Pruitt, Mike Pruitt piled up there, hit at the line of scrimmage, maybe gets a yard, a yard and a half out of it. It'll be second down and eight. Let's put this thing in perspective. Two unbeaten teams coming in, each pulling out late minute victory all the way through the season. And I'd like to emphasize the point Don Meredith just made because it is the key point about this Dallas team for the long pull of the season. He said, still no pass rush, and that's been true all game. And the absence of few and too tall Jones registers more heavily than ever. Six sacks in three games for Dallas coming into tonight. Brian Sides up on top. Uh, Aaron Kyle is going to be called for pass interference, I do believe, against Dave Logan. Once again, has hurt himself. I think the point about the pass rush maybe is even more important, Howard, when I saw an interesting statistic this past week. In the past 10 years, the number one team in sacking the quarterback for 10 years has been Dallas. And they have not been able to sustain what obviously is a fairly excellent part of their defense in the first three four games this year. First and goal. Ball close to the two-yard line. Mike Pruitt. And he, he got, got in there. Cowboys into the end zone. Oh, Pruitt. Those fans behind the Cleveland goalpost are up as one. He bounces into Bob Rooney, bounces off, keeps his feet, falls into the end zone, and Cleveland has moved out on top, and it's going to be very difficult for Dallas to come back. Another conversion, kick low. I think it was a bad snap, and it was missed. I think you're going to see uh, Thomas Henderson coming through. He may be the, well, this is the uh, touchdown play. Thomas Henderson hits him in a way, kind of knocked. 
running off of him. Good pursuit of that left side. Put that thing in. They're in trouble right now. 26 7, and we'll be back in a moment. Now there's a way to type that gets your paperwork done right and done faster. No problem typing from Lanier. You want your work back error-free? No problem. Corrections are made here instead of on paper. Want to move a paragraph? No problem. Add or delete a sentence? No problem. Want your typing back sooner? No problem. Electronic typing from Lanier. Call your local Lanier office. There's a notion afoot that the boxier a car is, the more sense it makes. Now, it seems like Buick and a whole lot of Regal owners disagree. Instead of making the Regal look like a European jogging shoe, they made it crisp and clean. Instead of making it austere, they made it luxurious. And instead of underpowering it, they give it an efficient V6 engine. Buick Regal. Proof that intelligence doesn't always come in a box. Regal. When a car looks good, it's nice to know it is this good. Mike Pruitt playing without the aid of his buddy Greg Pruitt here in the second half. The scored Cleveland's first rushing touchdown of the season. 26-7 over the Cowboys. 14-04 remaining in the fourth quarter. Ron Spring and Steve Wilson awaits the kickoff of Don Cockrock. If they don't score this time, I'm going to crank up Willie Nelson pretty early. I guarantee you. <laughs> Steve Wilson. Oh, what a hit. Looking, and looking for a... Gap. He's hit there by Randy Rich first, and then Ricky Jones really powdered him. You folks at home, you're watching professional football tonight. Not what you saw last Monday night, but professional football. You're seeing clean, hard tackling and blocking. I, I don't know that I can call five fumbles or five turnovers <laughs> real professional football. Well, some of them have been forced by the aggressiveness of play. Possibly so. They've been an astonishing team tonight. Give them some credit, Don. Let's do. Ball at the 32-yard line. Callback. Both for Billy Joe Dupree. And Clarence Scott had him well covered. The toughest thing, I think, for a quarterback to do in a situation like this is to not press. You're down. You know you're in a lot of trouble. And the tendency is, well, i got to make something big happen in a hurry. And when you try to do that oftentimes, that's when, again, you just amplify the problems you've already had. Not that Rodgers had that many tonight, but he has had two interceptions, and that's not really like it. So, again, kind of keep you cool, hold that thing together. Pick up Park. you got to start off with first down. Second down, 10. Ball at the 32-yard line. Drew Pearson goes right. Tony Hill slips to the left. complete. I'll tell you, you're seeing a team that's hitting, Don. Give them credit. Oh, man, I've been giving them a lot of credit. They're doing a good job, but I'm also just pointing out the obvious fact that Dallas is not yes, playing a, 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 a free game. Mistake. Yes. But this is an up team tonight. Yes. Cleveland. It, is. it certainly is. Oh. Incidentally, next week, for the first time in the 10-year history of the series, we're going to be going to one of the cradles of professional football. Green Bay with Sun. More on that in a moment. Third down, 10. Out of the shotgun. Deflected. Number 74, Mike St. Clair. Got a big call up there. Dallas will have to punt. And that good ball for me. <laughs> for Dallas. They needed to move the football. They needed to score. This team is unbelievable tonight, the Cleveland Browns. But next week, the home of Curly Lambeau, Arnie Herbert, Don Hudson, the home of Vincent T. Lombardi, and Bart Starr, and Paul Horning, and Jimmy Taylor, and Fuzzy Thurston, and Jerry Kramer, and Ron Kramer, and the Green Bay Packers as they go against the talent-laden New England Patriots. Frank. That, by the way, was Keith Wright. And you forgot Jerry. You forgot Jerry Star. She lives there, too. <laughs> Cleveland has the football at their own 33-yard line. And they have Dallas in deep trouble. 13-30 remaining in the game. 
General Motors does make a lot of cars, but a lot of people don't know that we are the biggest producer of diesel electric locomotives. My kids call it, they call it the factory. John Schranz, locomotive tester. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. We test the final product. When we start the locomotive up for the first time, it rumbles a little bit and it runs. It's just a great feeling. They call us the glory people, but it takes everybody to make a product. Everybody's got to be good. And they are. They are craftsmen in their own way. It's hard to explain. It, it is a relationship, man and, and his machine. That engine is probably the best engine in the world. We need the railroad industry. There's no two ways around it. We are part of it, and I think we do a heck of a job. General Motors. People building transportation to serve people. America's champion Charles Dickner in the 1980 Winter Olympics exclusively on ABC faces the challenge of Olympic gold. Well, somebody there put the right name in the wrong color. Ah, oh, ran out of ink. Probably so. Enough go. Sure, it was unintentional. Festive night here in Cleveland. A crowd of over 80,000 loving what they've been watching. The Browns exploded for 20 points in the first quarter. Staggered a bit. Dallas, victim of their own mistakes over and over again. And all of a sudden, Cleveland has started to move the football once again. From the 33-yard line, handoff, Mike Pruitt. And Mike Pruitt gets out over the 35-yard line. Well, they talk about cloud nine, but Cleveland has been higher than that tonight. Really unbelievable. Rosie, <laughs> the owner, Art Modell, over to the left. He takes the... these games so seriously. He loves it. He bought this team in 1961. He is probably their biggest fan. Well, he hired Sam Reticliano. Kind of easygoing coach. And yet the players are so responsive. Then, second down eight. Cleo Miller. I'm three. They're setting those things up well. Tom Henderson made it. What a stop. Oh. Gain of a couple. There's Art Modell. I wonder where that hotline goes to. <laughs> I got to tell you something. He grew up with me in Brooklyn. He became successful. <laughs> there is Should have happened to more court. people. You know? <laughs> he went to New York High School. The green and white. I went to Hamilton, the scarlet and the gray. Both of our teams stank. <laughs> and Rotigliano went to Erasmus Hall. <laughs> That's right, the buff and blue. We love you. Henderson playing. One yard pickup. Third down, six. Uh huh. Cleveland playing it a little cautiously now. Hands off to Mike Pruitt. He's short of the first down. Have to turn it over to Dallas. 11.55 in the clock moving. First time in the game Cleveland played it cautiously. Frank, a good observation. But after watching Craig Morton hit three touchdowns in less than three minutes, I don't know if it's ever safe anymore. That's what Craig did yesterday when Denver came from so far behind. It was incredible to beat Seattle. I sure am proud of old Curly. <laughs> There's Wade, man. He told you he did not play collegiate football at Ohio State as a center fielder on their baseball team. Got a, and a great one he was. Got a scholarship to Ohio State. As an engineering student. I like that sort of stuff. Johnny Evans will punt for Cleveland. Long count again. Trying to dog Dallas offside. And here is Manning. And down goes Manning at the 20. Randy Rick down there early for Cleveland. 41-yard punt. And Dallas is 80 yards away from a possible second score. you got to be kidding you don't move mountains, you go through them. And all it takes to carve a tunnel out of a mile of hard rock is steel and sweat and dynamite. Now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. my best motor oil, Sunoco Special. Heck, you can take this 10W40 grade, do a lot of hard driving, and it'll stay a 40 grade. 
Now that's an oil you can count on. I can be very friendly, yes I can. Catch you the kindness, that's my plan. If you courtesy, that's what friendly is to me. I can be very friendly, very friendly. Yes I can. Yeah. It's part of, a part of that tremendous crowd. And some of the defensive players for the Browns were kind of leading them on in cheers. And I'd say that's revving it just a little. I'd say that uh, it really is. They were doing all that hollering right over the ears with the Cowboys. And they deserve it. They have played great football tonight. Dallas, well, they have really had their problems. They've created most of them. Fowley in motion on first and ten. Staubach. Green to Fowley. And a former White Plains High School player gets a first down out to the 34-yard line. Tom Garden upsetting Saudi. He's been a troubled young man, having felt he's not being used enough. I asked Gil Brandt, the super director of player personnel, there he is, out of South Carolina, today, how his mental attitude is. He said he's still troubled. But you always have that with a ball player who feels he's not being played enough. He can play, I'll tell you. On first down, draw play, Scott Laidlaw. Laidlaw pounds out to the 40-yard line, a gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Up into there by Jerry Shirk. Both of these teams coming in undefeated. Remember Robert Newhouse not playing tonight. Sore ankle. Played spite of it against the Bears, but too much tonight. Valuable time, ticking away for Dallas. Drawback wanted to go deep, and Mike St. Clair was their defensive for Cleveland. Oh, boy. Drawback, punt fake. Thought he had the time to get it off, and he was buried. St. Clair was there. Number 74, Gregory, is also there. Gregory may be the happiest man in football. He's back. He's back where he belongs. Originally a ninth-round draft pick of the Browns, 66, four years started. Made out his option in 71, wasn't too happy then. Went to the Giants for a first-round draft pick, retired at the end of training camp. The deal was worked out. He's back where he began it all as an all-pro well, some 13 years ago. Third down now at 11. Draw back. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, he's giving it a Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> he's out there giving it a whirl. In a situation like this, I'm reminded of my friend Sisyphus. Remember Sisyphus rolling that stone up the mountain and let it come back down? They're definitely rolling it up the hill right now. He just couldn't find anybody out there. Pretty well covered. Jerry Shirk missed him twice and finally got him. I, yep. I sure do like Roger's attitude. You know that guy. I sure I do. Yeah, come up there. But that man right there, Frank just said it. What? He missed him. Twice he missed him. The third time he got him. You talk about pursuit, you talk about second effort, Jerry Shirk personified it. Roger sacked three times tonight. Danny White is on the punt. Keith Wright standing at his own 35-yard line. Danny punts the beauty. Fair catch called for by Keith Wright at the 33. And Cleveland now will begin to seriously work on the clock, which indicates 8.26 remaining in the game. Cleveland out on top considerably. Buick proudly announces some very fine cars and some very good thinking. This is the 1980 Century Limited sedan. My sister thinks it's very sophisticated. My dad thinks it's economical. My mother thinks it's roomy. I think I'm lucky to have it tonight. This is the limited edition Regal Somerset. I think it's elegant proof that a truly sensible car doesn't have to be... Boring. 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 This is the Buick Riviera, an automobile so incredible that people who could seriously think about buying almost any car in the world are driving Rivieras. This is the Buick Skyline, 
It has a surprising amount of room and comfort and really good economy and front wheel drive. I think it just might be the perfect car for me. Or you. Do you think that owning a 1980 Buick might be a good idea? Good thinking. The most important fight this year, undefeated Larry Holmes battles the WBC number one ranked contender, Ernie Shaver. Friday night on ABC. I just want to emphasize again, you'll see the man in that tremendous boxing guard who many consider the greatest in the world. Inspiration, pound for pound, Roberto Duran. The Sugar Ray Leonard fight begins at 8 o'clock. So tune in at the top. Leonard against Benitez, December 1st. You'll see that one for the title on ABC. On first down, Mike Pruitt gets the call. And again, Bob Brunig over there to make the stop defensively for Dallas. In the 20-year history of the Cowboys, they've beaten the Cleveland Browns six times. Kind of surprised about that? I mentioned it last week. You did? You weren't with us. Fran was, and I said, Dandy, Dandy lost to them twice in the play our late 60s. I can see right now that's one thing I miss by not being here every week. Mm -hmm. It was 11 years ago I set up here for CBS and watched you, Don, performing in your last yeah. regular season game here. That's right. They've only played one game here since and won that one 6-2 in the mud. They Second down nine. Ooh. And Aaron Kyle can't get to it. Dave Logan, intended receiver. Brian looking downfield, saw that he was going to be covered. Fired a deep. Brought in Larry Bethay. They got Larry Bethay in there this time. They changed up that defensive line. Got a whole new group. You got Bruce Thornton, who's a big rookie that's doing a pass job. You can see right there that that's the closest we've seen a defensive lineman all night. All night. Thornton was great against the Bears in that late victory for the Cowboys. You saw a sign a moment ago, say something good about Cleveland. We have been all yeah. night long. Yeah. Respect for this team and their performance tonight is really great. Third down nine. Draw play. Cleo Miller out over the 35 to the 36. Clock continuing to move inside eight minutes. I'll tell you, as they come off the field, uh, names you maybe don't know too well. Tom DeLeona, center. Robert Jackson, one guard. Peeler from Oakland, remember him there? Oh, yeah. Left guard, Doug Deacon, Henry Shepard. They have performed admirably tonight for the Cleveland Browns, that offensive line. That was a great trade Cleveland made for George Peeler. Number 64. Together with Upshaw, they were two of the great guards of the league at Oakland. And Beeler is held together for Cleveland. Dave Wilson is back on punts now for Dallas. Johnny Evans to punt. Off the side of his foot once again. Johnny Evans trying to hang on to the lead in the AFC. And punting, I think he's tonight. He's had a rough night. He goes out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Dallas comes on the field with 6.46 remaining in the game and down 26-7. to Doesn't look good, does it? No, it does not for Dallas, but it looks good for that man, Sam Rodigliano. What a nice man, Sam. Went to Erasmus, as Frank said. Where the high school cheer, you'll remember vividly, Don. Vivo, 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 Vest, E-R-A-S-M-U-S. Now, believe it or not, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> now back. Drew Pearson. Pearson. Moves out to the 47-yard line. They're going to move it back where his progress was at the 47-yard line. Ron Bolt all over Drew Pearson. First down, Dallas. The Bucks beat Montreal 5-2 in the first. They lead Montreal 6-2 in the sixth of the second. If they win it, they'll lead by one and a half. Houston lost to Atlanta 5-4 in the first. They trail 8-0 in the second in the eighth inning. They will be two and a half behind Cincinnati if that up team. On first down, Sawback immediately to the air. Tony Hill, intended receiver. Sawback uh, had to hurry it. He was pressured again by Jack Gregory. And as time dwindles down in this game with 5.59 left, the Royals are still alive. They are leading California 3 to nothing in the third. They went into the game trailing by three. So you're updated on the Major League pennant races. Baltimore, of course, has clinched. 
the Bears, who belong in Baltimore. Second down, 10. Drew Pearson split right. Tony Hill to the left. Dorsett gets the draw play. And Mr. Excitement gets inside the 40. But he's been contained very well tonight by Cleveland. Did you see Gregory, 81, trailing him, but not quite quick enough to get to him? I did see that. I did. Jack Gregory. Dorsett picks up eight. It'll be third down and two. I got a feeling he's going to unload this one. Deep. He ought to pick up his first. He does. Tony Dorsett. Backed up there by Mickey Sims. That's a... In the perspective of this game, Cleveland has had so many heroes. Frank has touched upon it appropriately throughout the evening. That offensive line that gave sight such great protection. The unsung linebackers who were all over the field. The Cleveland secondary led by Tom Dodson's two interceptions. What a performance by a team. Roger needs a big one. Looking for Drew Pearson. Oliver Davis playing Drew Pearson very intelligently. He was going to give him anything underneath, nothing in the end zone. One of the things that helped is they had him doubled on the inside that time, right with Tom Darden who came in there, so he uh, really didn't have a shot to come back. So a quick shot of Drew Pearson who appeared to have been taken ill. He sure did, and he's coming right out of that. That's a scene you may not see for a long time to come. Probably just as well. Yes. You're quite right. But an evidence of the effort to this contest. Second down, 10. Somehow, Jerry Shirk. Fourth time he's been sacked tonight. Actually, there were two other Browns were in there. Mike St. Clair forced Roger to step up, and he ran right in to Jerry Shirk. Gregory was also there. A year ago, as Frank told you earlier, they thought Jerry Shirk was finished. What a night he's had tonight. Uh, Look at that. And how about Gregory that time? Gregory just manhandled Pat Donovan, threw him back in. The pressure caused by Gregory caused that reserve blocker to come back and hit him. No one was there to pick up Shirk. And you have to wonder all over again about Jack Gregory and the past year. Third down, 16. to Steve Wilson and the rookie from Howard gets the first down inside the 20 there by Tom Dart. 3.50 and the clock is moving and on the scoreboard. Dart, as you can see, irritated with himself. Felly had the play red. Felly should have had the football. Good concentration by Wilson that time. The ball oh, yeah. is a little bit high and it's over the middle. He is a rookie. Hadn't been across the middle that many times yet. Yeah, he's, he's earned his way on this team, Don. He can do a lot of things for them. The Angels closing in on the Royals. It's now 3-2 Kansas City, the fourth inning. Second kicking away for the Cowboys. Next Sunday, they'll be at home against Cincinnati. Cleveland travels to Houston. I'm telling you. Yeah, on you. He got kicked. Oh, and Tom Darden could have had the third interception of the night. I sit down and have a very serious conversation with my offensive line right now. Mickey Take a Sims. look at this. Mickey Sims pressuring him again, Don. It's just pick, man. I mean, they're all coming in here. Shirt and Sim. My gosh. I say, all right. Play Matthew. Right there. Hey, well, that's not a bad move again by the rookie Steve Wilson. They're just zipping in there. The thing, you know, the Cowboys obviously are going to be out of this ball game. But you've got to instill that offensive line. You can't let down. I don't care if you're going to stand back there and throw, by golly, you got to get up there and, and block. We'll have some talks about that. Don't you think? I Second think down. Green Bay. Second down, 10. And 
I think the 30-second clock had expired. We could have another delay a game against the Cowboys. And they have had trouble tonight. Well, the last time the Cowboys were shut out, and they didn't score anything, was on a Monday night. 1970. I remember it well. Uh, St. Louis, 78. Uh, Cowboys, love. I, I, I knew you would remember it. I didn't know whether the folks out in television land would have known about that. And I'm going to get out there. And I remember it because the crowd was screaming, we want Dandy. We want Dandy. Next time I have anything to say, I'm going to send you a telegram and let you read it over the air. <laughs> you, you get me? <laughs> Man, you have been tough all night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pick it up anytime you want to, Frank. You gotta, you gotta be quick. <laughs> Second down, 15. The little girl procedure against the Cowboys. Roger going for Tony Hill, and he cannot hold on. Defensively, it was Clinton Burrell, a 6'2", 190-pound rookie out of LSU, who has really been performing well as the fifth man on the defense for Cleveland. One of the wonderful being this far ahead this late in the game is you can afford to double all those outside wide receivers and not worry about anything kind of coming up in the middle. You see two guys around most everybody, and they're going to, it's just going to make it that much harder to complete a ball down there. And the other luxury, if you're a defensive lineman, you can totally disregard the run. That really is true. Uh, maybe it was a little too harsh on the offensive line of the Cowboys because they know they're coming. Mel Blood. Third down, 15. Inside three minutes. Ball back. Going for Saldi. No chance. Saldi picked up and covered well by Clarence Scott, the strong safety for Cleveland. So you're looking at a Dallas team that's about to lose its first game. But they are so skilled, so professional. They've been through it before. Remember last year, four losses in the relatively early season. And there they were, again in the Super Bowl. They lost on a Thursday night to Francis Talkington, Talkington and the Vice. They lost to the Miami Dolphins. This is a slow-starting team every year. Giff has always emphasized that. They didn't start slowly this year. They extricated themselves. We'll see him again October the 14th against the Los Angeles Rams. That'll be on a Sunday night. Fourth down for Dallas, fourth and 15. Rodgers. Oh, nice catch. Fires in there. Drew Pearson has the ball. Good lot. He's right back uh, in. He did not get the first down. He's a yard and a half short. Uh, does that show you a little courage, though, to get back and come back and go back across the middle again? My hat's off to you, Drew. Well, this one is, is over, folks. There's going to be some learning things out of that. Look at that. Drew Pearson, go for that ball. And that's the guy you saw that was sick while ago and go off the field, come back down. There's some quality players out there. This Cleveland bunch has really put it together tonight. Drew, good job, fella. He's really amazing. You talk about character. There are a few empty seats, but not many, as the Cleveland Browns fans are savoring tonight's overwhelming Victory over the Cow Cowboys. And again, I remind you, the Cowboys with three turnovers on fumbles, a couple of interceptions, a couple of penalties at just the wrong time, a blocked field goal. Hard to win when you do that. What this will do in the NFC East, of course, it will fire up Philadelphia, and later this year we'll see the Eagles under the brilliant coaching of Dick Vermeil as there's a timeout on the field, go against the Cowboys. And as we await the final two and a half of this game, we'll be right back. Goodyear Tiempo, official tire of the 1980 Winter Olympics, brings you Alice Fetters, postal worker, Lake Placid, New York. You know, up here in the Olympic country, we can experience four seasons of weather in one day. And that's why I got my Tiempo. It's a tire for all seasons. Tiempo is the rain tire, snow tire, sun tire. One tire that does it all. I got back and forth in Lake Placid's worst weather. Get Goodyear Tiempo, the all-season radio, and eliminate winter tire changeover. You've just sold me on a great typewriter, but I work with numbers. 
The Lanier No Problem typewriter does more than just type. Financial typing, no problem. It even adds and subtracts. I do our personnel list. Will it help there? No problem. It sorts alphabetically and numerically and gets your work back faster. The Lanier No Problem typewriter. It does more than just type. It's been a festive night here in Cleveland Municipal Stadium in all respects. Flags, banners out, crowd of over 80,000. 58 times the Cardinal took over this franchise. In 61, they've gone over 80,000. Second down and six. Calvin Hill picked up four yards on first down. He gets the control call again and pounds out to the 20 where it'll be third down and three. Bob Bruning should be at the bottom of that pile defensively for Dallas. You know, Don, if this score holds, the Cowboys haven't been beaten by this many points since losing to the 49ers, 31 to 10, late in 72. I was just going to mention that. <laughs> that Cowboys hope. down to one timeout now. Let, let's hope that... Uh, Greg Pruitt's not hurt that badly, Frank. He's the guy that we mentioned earlier in this telecast, and we haven't seen him since uh, he left the game with an injury. Now, it was a knee. Was that what they were looking at? Just shot a vile out like Mount but Rushmore certainly did with a beard. You know, you're so right, because Greg Pruitt is uh, so much of Cleveland Browns' offense. Brian Sykes having a big night, but you have to move that ball on the ground. And we understand that it'll be tomorrow before we have a full and complete diagnosis of the knee that Greg damaged in the first half. Speaking of Mount Rushmore, you saw another shot. That's right. The impassive coach, Dom Lander. What a great coach. Taking the Cowboys into the playoffs every year but one since 1966. But in five Super Bowls, won a couple of them. Third down, long three for Cleveland. 219, Dallas down to one timeout. Leo Miller, he'll outrun Bruning and more. Out over the 45-yard line. Oh, boy. How do you like the way Brian Seif has run this ball club now? I like the way Brian Seif has run this ball club. He has done a good job. And we are going to get the two-minute warning. The coaches being told the obvious, and we'll be returning in a moment. These people all work at Ramada Inn, Central Kansas City. But right now, instead of taking reservations, cleaning rooms, or carrying luggage, they're talking about new ways of taking better care of the guests. I'm Tom Schuler. I run the Ramada Inn, but it's eager people like these who really make our hotel work. Nice people taking care of nice people. Action photography is easy with the Minolta XG1 35mm. Hi, I'm Christy Jenner. I just focus and touch this electronic button to give me great pictures automatically. The XG loads easily too. This signal shows me that the film is loaded properly and the electronic self-timer lets us get into our own pictures. <laughs> Minolta XG1, the automatic choice for action photography. I'll tell you, there's no better feeling than playing in front of a sold-out home crowd and looking up there with the two-minute warning and you're looking at 26 to 7 and you're on top. Let's say it's at least among the top two feelings. It is one of your big thrills. If you've been around a while, you know there's going to be other days, but you can sure stay for this one. Cleveland is doing just that. On first down, Pat Moriarty, the rookie out of Georgia Tech. Had a sparkling preseason for the Cleveland Browns. Gets the call and he picks up three yards with a second down and seven. I don't know what will happen in this top seat derby league next week. There's Tom Henderson. He bought that way, half uh, shrug spoke for itself. He he said, he'll be back. He he'll be back. Way, he, by the way, has a bruised sternum. He was holding his left hand. We thought it was, but actually, he has a bruised sternum. Caught the heel when he made that tackle. That happens a lot. Kind of kick it up right in the chest. Sam's got to be happy. Yes, yeah, he is, and you can read it. <laughs> Cleveland's up. Mike Pruitt. Last to move to the outside, and D.D. Lewis takes another fine play. That's 
tell you, Cleveland has been incredible tonight. Sure, Dallas made those mistakes. We've emphasized that. I want to thank our statistician, Jerry Klein, our spotter Steve DeZica, and tell you once again, as always, the executive producer of ABC Sports is Will Arley. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is produced by Dennis Lewin, directed by Fred, or rather, Jeff Forty. Our technical director, Bill Morris, is director, Rob Biner. Our technical manager, Vern Carrick. Our unit manager is Irma Norris. Hope you've enjoyed the pretty pictures. Third down, seven. Pat Moriarty, a rookie from uh, Georgia Tech. Looks up a couple of yards. Summarizing the Cleveland defense tonight. Three fumble recoveries, two interceptions, two deflected passes, four sacks, minus 32 yards for Dallas, one blocked field goal. What a performance. And a partridge and a pear tree. <laughs> Why not? Dallas <laughs> calls the timeout. I guess they're not leaving until tomorrow morning. They want to work on their fourth down defense. This is fourth down coming up. Fourth and down it's a rare five. opportunity to have, you know, to do that. So when you have that opportunity, you do it. I'll tell you, a lot of this crowd of 80,000 plus has hung around. And they're going to do a attack for you as soon as that gun goes off. And it's going to go off after the next play. Great turnout. And, of course, Cleveland will remain undefeated as are the Pittsburgh Steelers in their central division of the AFC. Tampa Bay undefeated. John McKay doing a super job down there. Well, he's got that club pulled together. Mike Pruitt. This what should be the last call of the ball game. Well, I think it's fourth down. And the clock will stop on the exchange of squats. So Dallas still has it on play. <laughs> Greg, we'll say happy birthday to your mama, Maggie Pruitt, just for you. I'm into the undefeated, and I certainly would not have the Miami Dolphins out of there. Don Shula is in that football team around, rebuild it, reach back, and got Larry Zaka running the ball again. We'll see them down the line on Monday night. And Sam Rotigliano, Art Waddell says he's going to go down as a great head coach in his second year of the Cleveland Browns. If he doesn't, he's also going to go down. Certainly, he's a great person. He is that. Come back. Preston Pearson, he'll slither out of bounds, stopping the clock with 11 seconds at the 49-yard line. Oliver Davis over there for the pop for Cleveland. With a heavy pop to the very end, Cleveland pouring it on. Hey, remember, guys, there's another day. But enjoy it. There's Jerry. All right, Reggie. Right. Our guys from Brooklyn. There they are. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, me. Ain't it wonderful? <laughs> Second down. And two. Drew Pearson. They indicate that he stepped out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Six seconds remaining in the game. Ron Bolton up there to hit Drew Pearson. Drew's giving him some words back in there. He said, look, fella, you know what the score is. You go over here pounding me a little bit, and there will be another day. <laughs> The first down for Dallas. Again, we've already told you several times the frustration of the Cowboys tonight with their turnovers. A couple of fumbles. Three fumbles. Back, two interceptions. Block field goal. Roger. Preston Pearson. We won't get out of bounds on this one. It's all over. Interesting, Keith Wright dropped over to say hello to Tom. And there's Sam, shaking hands. What a classy guy, Tom Landry. And so is 
those fans. Yep. And how about Brian Seif? He got it all started with a big 20 points in the first quarter. All right, once again, the final score, Cleveland, 26 Dallas 7. Be sure to join us next week for ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the New England Patriots against the Green Bay Packers from Lambeau Field in colorful Green Bay, Wisconsin. Our clip provided by the...